Good evening, everyone. We are going to be calling the City Commission meeting for the City of Deltona for June 7th, 2021 to order. If we can all please take a seat. May we have the roll call, please. Commissioner Bila Vasquez? Present. Commissioner King? Here. Commissioner McCool? Here. Commissioner Ramos? Present. Commissioner Sosa? Here. Vice Mayor Bradford? Present. Mayor Herzberg? Here. Um, just a quick bit of business before we begin, begin with the invocation and the pledge. Uh, Vice Mayor Bradford is joining us via Zoom this evening. Therefore, um, I will go ahead and designate former Vice Mayor Ramos to be the uh, person I will pass the gavel to this evening should I need that. Just for the record. Okay, this evening, Commissioner King, we'll turn the meeting over to you for the invocation and so forth. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this evening, we're going to have uh, Pastor Ricardo and, Mar and his wife, Miriam Rodriguez, from the Centro Internacional de la Familia uh, here in Deltona. Uh, he will do the invocation. Uh, that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to our national flag and ask you to remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Shannon White, uh, a teacher at Youth Performing Arts Training Center here in Deltona. Pastor, please stand. King for the invitation. Y gracias a cada uno de los comisionados y al alcalde de esta ciudad. And also the, thanks to the commissioners and the mayor of our city. Oremos. Padre, en esta noche, Father, in this night, venimos delante de ti, we come before you, reconociendo tu soberanía, we recognize your sovereignty, reconociendo que eres Dios, and recognizing that you are God. Hoy es una noche importante, today is a very important evening, porque es un día nuevo para nosotros, because it is a new day for each one of us, que nos da la habilidad de estar aquí, that gives, that you give us the opportunity to be here, para dirigir, to lead, para tomar decisiones, to make decisions, las cuales te pido Dios, the ones that I that we ask, Lord, que sean bajo tu dirección, that they will be under your direction, bajo tu autoridad, and under your authority. Porque eres tú quien tienes la última palabra. For you have the last word. Deltona, Deltona, es una ciudad de destino. It is a city of destiny. Y como hijos tuyos en esta ciudad, and as your children, queremos lo mejor para esta comunidad. We want the best for this community. Y tú eres el Dios, and you are the God, que nos guarda de toda that keeps us from all evil y nos guías and guides us bajo la sombra del omnipotente. under the shadow of the Almighty. Te doy gracias Thank you, God, por las cosas que estás haciendo for the things you are doing y las cosas que harás and the things you will do para bendición for a blessing a esta ciudad to this city y lugares adyacente. and the adjacent Todo esto te lo pido We ask these things en el nombre del Padre, in the name of the Father, del Hijo, the Son, y del Espíritu Santo. and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Thank you. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
That was amazing. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to our business meeting. Item 4A, approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting of February 1st, 2021, as presented. Do we have a motion and a second? So move. Second. Properly moved by Commissioner Ramos, seconded by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll move to item 5A, proclamation. This evening we have a proclamation for Immigrant Heritage Month. And um, we would like to recognize the month of June as Immigrant Heritage Month to the generations of immigrants from every corner of the globe who have helped to build our country's economy and continue to be tireless leaders in our community. Liz, do you have? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Avila Vasquez will go ahead and present the proclamation. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas generations of immigrants from every corner of the globe have <laughs> built our country's economy and created the unique character of our nation, and whereas immigrants continue to grow businesses, innovate, straighten our economy, and create America's jobs in Deltona, Florida, and whereas Immigrants have provided the United States with unique social and cultural influence, fundamentally enri enriching, enriching the extraordinary character of our nation. And whereas immigrants have been tireless leaders, not only in securing their own rights and access to equal opportunity, but have also campaigned to create a fairer and more just society for all Americans. And whereas, despite these countless contributions, the role of immigrants in building and enriching our nation has frequently been overlooked and undervalued throughout our history and continuing to the present day. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and commissioner of the city of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2021 as Immigrant Heritage Month executed the seventh day of June, 2021. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there anyone in the audience that was here to accept this proclamation? Okay. Seeing none, thank you. Do we have a teacher? Do we have a teacher present that can accept it? I don't, do, we have, do we have anyone at a teacher present this evening from any of our schools? Okay, thanks. Okay, next we are going to have a presentation of the Rotary Club of DeBerry, Deltona, Orange City, and we are gonna do a special recognition. And uh, Pat Northy and Sherry, if you'd like to come up and take the podium. Turn the mic around. There we go. That's good, maybe. <laughs> good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. Can you, is that it? Okay. My name is Sherry Simmons, and I am here uh, because I can't say no to Pat Northy, for one, but I'd like to update you all as to how uh, the Rotary Club of DeBarry, Deltona, and Orange City, what we do for the communities here. I'm joined tonight. Uh, I'm lucky to be joined here tonight by someone you all know very well, Pat Northy. Ms. Northy holds a lot of titles in our community, but we like to believe that the best title she holds is former past president, or past president of the Rotary Club. Also joining us, we have Eli and Mary. I, don't make me say their last name. Chaparro, uh, thank you, the bird nerds, right? So out. <laughs> Our Rotary Club is part of Rotary International, combined, oh, and I apologize, I should be doing that. Is this, sorry, as I learned to do this here. There we go. So combined, there are over 35,000 clubs in the world, uh, total membership exceeding 1.2 million. 
Rotary supports communities by providing critical resources, to, uh, helping communities to ensure that basic needs are met. Things like uh, we help provide clean water, sanitation and hygiene, uh, working with mothers and children, supporting education, promoting peace, fighting disease, and helping to grow local economies. We do this through uh, there we go. I, uh, we do this through a number of fundraising events, and, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. So first, about our club, we have 24 active members, including former Commissioner uh, Bob McFall. We have four honorary members. Our average age is 60, um, but we're trending. We're starting to trend down. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to help that. Um, and our members... Uh, our members lead a lot of organizations in West Volusia, and many are community leaders in every sense of the word. We have a, uh, we meet every Thursday at DeBarry Golf and Country Club at 745. We're on Facebook, and our website is DeBarryRotary.org. We have a great board. Uh, our outgoing president, I think this is his last month, is Joe Alimony, and his, yeah, last month, and our current board is here on the screen. Dr. Kaffner will be our new president, and it goes down, goes down the list there. One of our biggest fundraisers <laughs> is our River Run. This year, I think, was our best year yet. And in a few minutes, we'll be presenting Commissioner Victor Ramos with a second place award for his age division, which he did really well. We, we had a huge thunderstorm uh, just at the very end. But you could see all the fun uh, people were having. They, the runners were led off by our sheriff, who I know is in the room, and we were joined by Mayor Chazé of DeBarry and Mayor Blair of Orange City. And school board member Ruben Colon, I don't know if he's here, um, he helped uh, bring out about 25 youth to help with the day. We had great sponsors, including, oh, and I'm going through these pictures a little quickly. We had some great sponsors, including Advent Health, the city of DeBarry, Volusia County, I'm sorry, trying to two, two things at once, Main Street Bank, and others that you could see here, and we can't do it without their support. All the money raised goes back to the community. Again, we're small but powerful. Our small group raised $26,000, even in the tough year that we just had. So as, you, as everyone has seen, uh, 2020 was very tough, but we still managed to raise $26,000. And this slide shows, if I can get to it, shows where the money goes. So Pat, I don't know if you want to make any comment on that? Sure. We, sure. We give out scholarships annually to graduating seniors from the four high schools, uh, presidential charity awards. Rather than give everybody little plaques, uh, the president gives each of the board members an opportunity to designate their a, a contribution to a, a, a community event. Um, mine will go to St. John's River to the Sea Loop Alliance. Uh, he also has a charity award that he ad identifies as his. This year it's Advent Health with their opening of the new facility, the new pediatrics and OB. We're going to do a cuddle cot. We're, we're, we're paying for a cuddle cot. So we have a lot of um, early youth training, not so much this year because there wasn't a lot of training because of COVID, but um, that whatever we raise, goes back to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. One of the events we had to postpone in 2020 was our very popular Hops and Vine. Uh, we're going to bring that back November of this year, and it's a fun event. We have um, it features local brewers, unique wines, uh, excuse me, unique wines, live, live music, and we know it's going to be great. So tickets, advanced tickets are $25, and just uh, follow us for more information as we go uh, as we go through the year. And of course, our River Run will return, Victor, in 2022. So we hope to see you all there. We would like to invite the city to join us as an individual member or as a corporate membership plan. Just let us know. We can accommodate that. We'd love to have you. You have so many of your citizens are a part of it, so we'd hope to have you as a corporate member, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Sherry. And yes, and so now we'll make a, we, you want to call up everyone? Uh, well, well, we have a special 
you know, it, it's, this is, um, when, when runners come across the line, they get timed, and we do first, second, and third place in age categories, uh, at, like every five years. So Victor, as you saw, came in second in his age category. And rather than give out, again, plaques, we like to give out something fun. So we're giving out beer glasses this year. <laughs> and, and we have Victor's, but we also have one for every one of you. Are, are they allowed to take beer glasses, Mr. Attorney? <laughs> okay, and we have one for you and one for John, and I think I saw David Sandiac, oh yes, the sheriff who led our people out on his bike, he gets one. I think David Santiago will give you one because I think you've been begging for it. So, um, if, if Victor, do you wanna come down and? Say the greatest mayor in Volusia County. <laughs> Ooh, she's in the wrong she, place. Right, she's in the wrong place to say that. <laughs> okay, here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This, is, this is your goodie bag. Thank, Thank you. you so much for Appreciate all you it. did. Thank you. Next year, we'll make sure Here, you want an extra goodie bag? Take an extra one. Okay, and, and um, uh, can I give these to the clerk to give out to you all afterwards? But I'm going to yes, take please. one out for David. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor, if I can real quickly, I understand the challenge has been set already by Will. He did win first place, so he challenged me, so I look forward not only to beating him, but hopefully having some of my com commissioners up here um, supporting as well, so thank you. We would love to have you all come out, and Will Roberts did run in, in it, and Gary Blair walked, and Victor, you, you've been with us, this is, I think, your third or fourth year, so we are very grateful for all your support. Thank you. Congratulations, Commissioner. So now we'll move on to the next item. Item C, the City of Deltona Crime Stats. Sheriff Chitwood, you are up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Can I fold this down and spread out, or we'll figure it out, I guess, from here, huh? If you can give me one second, modern technology is not cooperating, but now it is. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to address the commission, and I want to explain to you why we have a room full of deputies. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, members of this commission listened to a big lie, okay? A lie that was concocted way in advance of this, commi this commission meeting because of their disagreement with metal detectors. That's not my job, metal detectors, that's yours. But when you use my office as a political pawn and you try, convict, and execute a 32-year member of this organization, the folks behind me have a problem with that, as I do. Because there's nothing, <laughs> thank you for that. Because in today's day and age, it's not easy to become being a cop. They're out to get us. And one of the perks to working in the city of Deltona, and I could tell you, under, especially under Captain uh, uh, Lou Marino, deputies want to come here. They want to be part of this community. They want to be part of the good things that are happening. But when they watch one of their own basically get executed over a lie, and the lie was concocted because people don't want the metal detectors there, that's fine. But don't besmirch an organization and one, and one, and one deputy. He was expendable. I can't afford to have that happen to these men and women standing behind me, and especially in what happened here last week. But for those of you who don't know Deputy Thomas, when you convicted him, in November 2018, he was given a Medal of Life Saving Actions for reviving an elderly person who took a heart attack during the 5K run that we just talked about. In 2018, he received a Sheriff's Award for special consideration for his work in the courthouse. The same in 2018 for his work during Hurricane Irma. In 2016, he was commended for his actions during a bomb threat at the courthouse. 
In 2014, he received a letter of thanks from a woman who lost her purse in the courthouse. The deputy found it and then took it to her home. 2013, a letter of thanks from Judge Perkins for his part in providing security for judges in an annual conference. Letters of thanks and praise have been part of his file. He consistently is rated as exceed standards or is outstanding. And I think I wanted to put that on the record because that's the type of man that he is. And for somebody to come up here, and we all know this, we all people come up here, they call me and they tell the big lie. They tell you how Hall agreed to something happened. And the video showed something completely different, completely different. And anybody that wants to poo-poo it off and go, oh, this was trauma, this wasn't trauma. This was concocted and a blind man can see it. And that'll lead me to my second point, and then I'll get out of the way and let you guys conduct your business. Here we go again. The sheriff's office isn't doing their job correctly. We need to investigate having our own police department. And I think the folks behind me need, deserve an explanation if that's the road we're going to head down again. Because I want to share some things uh, with you. We have 83 deputies assigned here. Your contract is $12.5 million. You've seen less than a half a percent increase this year, despite everything that is going on with COVID, which I think is pretty damn good. Crime statistics from 2015 to 2020. Part one crimes, murder, robbery, aggravated assault, rape, burglary, stolen auto, and theft are down by 58%. Yeah. That is incredible work done by these men and women that are standing behind me. But it gets even more impressive. Your clearance rate, which is the ability to solve a crime once it occurred, our average is 42%. In 2019, it was 48%. In 2020, it was 51%. To put that in perspective, let's see what's going on nationally in policing. Violent crime has a national clearance rate of 45.5%. 45.5%, that's the national average in policing. Does anybody want to take a guess what it is in Deltona? It's 77%. 77% of the time that a violent crime, a murder, a shooting, an aggravated assault, a rape, these men and women behind me are rolling up their sleeves and doing everything they can with the tools that they have, following the Constitution, and making quality arrests. Property crimes, this is even better. Property crime, burglary, stolen car, larceny uh, car break, the national average is 17.2. In Deltona, it's 40%. And yet somebody gets up here and calls us perverts and degenerates and sons of bitches. We're not gonna stand for that. And I'm gonna to transition to your acting city manager, and I'll close with this. In my five years as the sheriff, this man is about transparency, accessibility, he knows the job, and he's got a passion for Deltona. He's got a passion to see this city succeed. And I don't know if you could fix his resignation, but you got a good man here who understands government, understands public safety, and wants this city to succeed. So I appreciate you listening to me, um, and I thank you for your time, and hopefully we'll see you on the 16th of, uh, of June. Sure, you see me. So if anybody has a question for me, if I can't answer it, these folks behind me certainly can. Um, we have um, several, Commissioner McCool, and then Commissioner Sosa, and then Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I would like to start, Sheriff Chitwood, by uh, thanking you for bringing your officers here this evening. I would like to look at each and every one of your officers, these deputies, each man and woman in the face, to tell you thank you for doing a great job that you do here in Deltona. <clears throat> I have worked with several of your deputies while with Deltona Strong in trying to get placement for victims of domestic violence in the middle of the night. I have worked with them getting food to people, gas cards. I have also requested from the community gas cards uh, and gift cards sent to the uh, department so that they're not taking money out of their pocket. So to say that I, and I'm saying myself because I was mentioned uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, is disingenuous that I don't appreciate the job that each and every one of you do, and I tell them that all the time, every single time. Second of all, I would like to say I was out of the country when this occurred and was asked what my 
take on the situation with, was with the deputy. And in the video that I created, I said that I did not personally see anything that the deputy did wrong, which I am sure is not the same as supporting the dep deputy as strongly as you mentioned, Sheriff Chitwood, uh, which is either due to lack of my experience on how politically charged a situation could be, but certainly it was not out of thinking that this deputy did anything wrong. And I would like to tell that deputy that and each one of the deputies here in no uncertain terms, do I think that that deputy did anything wrong and should be cleared and he has my support because he did nothing wrong. Third of all, I would like to say it was also brought up to me that I wanted to defund the police, which is absolute bull crap. I never said that, but I am responsible to answer to my constituents on a yearly basis when we get to budget time, which we're doing budget workshops next week, why doesn't Deltona have their own police department? And I have a fiduciary responsibility to explain to them why. Now, I did not know that questions had been asked, didn't know that this was pointed. When I was asked, I was out of the country. I had no knowledge, didn't see anything on my agenda, my workshop, my emails. Not, a, not anything about us trying to get rid of Volusia County Sheriff's Office. So I'd like to clarify that also. Next of all, I would like to see, say that um, I, I, you know, my father was a law enforcement officer and I'm cut from that same cloth and you don't get to soil the cloth that I'm cut from by saying these things about me when they're not true. And I understand how anger rolls, but composure rules the day. And that is what we need in these times. And I just wanted to say that. So if any officer standing in here, any deputy has any questions about how I support you and the job that you do here, my email is on the city website. I'm very appreciative to what you do. And I guarantee you this, that when it comes to the protection of city and law, I am certainly anything but spineless. I wanna thank you guys for doing what you did. I'm sure that um, after this evening, I hope that we can move forward. Know that you are wanted and appreciated here, Volusia County Sheriff's Office. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. You can talk to me or call me. I have a job to do up here, and political theater is not one of them, and I would really like to see us settle this peaceably and for each one of you to know that I stand behind you. And I just felt like I needed to say that. Sheriff, I appreciate the, the, the enormity of the job that you have to do. I can't imagine. I know that you have a lot of support, but I would like to say for me personally, if you ever have a problem with me, I would really like um, to ask me a, a, about that and what, what my view is before it's advertised as something that it's not. I respect you, sir. I understand that you're passionate about what you do, but I would just really hope that moving forward that before I am me or any of the commission or myself is called anything other than honorable that you would talk it over with me. And that's all I have. Thank you guys so very much for what you do. You lay your lives on the line. I understand what you do. And I can't imagine what you go through every night, but it's certainly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, I appreciate your words. We'll agree to disagree on some of those points, but I would like to follow up that the person who screams the loudest and runs around with a video camera shouldn't be the one who's directing what goes on. Because my responsibility is to every citizen in this community that they get the best policing they can, they can they deserve. My responsibility really isn't up there. That's my responsibility is to the people standing behind me. So thank you. Commissioner Sosa. Yeah, yeah, I just want to preface by saying, you know, that I appreciate the efforts of our law enforcement officers here in Volusia County and across the United States. I mean, I know you guys have a difficult job. I mean, for every car you pull over, it could be your last one. For every domestic violence call you respond to, it could be your last one. You know, I understand that it's a challenging job and sometimes a thankless job, and I do appreciate your efforts. Now, I do want to address Sheriff Chitwood on some of the comments he called me out on, which I believe to be false and inaccurate. Now, Sheriff Chitwood, I want to discuss a narrative you painted on the Mark Bernier show on June 3rd. You said Deltona City Commission wanted to defund the police. I personally have never said that law enforcement should be defunded. You know, and I wanna put this to rest tonight. 
Commissioner King, have you ever said you want to defund the police? No. Commissioner McCool, have you? Commissioner Ramos, have you ever said that? Mayor Herzberg, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Bradford, have you ever said you wanted to fund the police? Commissioner Vasquez, have you? Never. Never. So I'd like to put that to rest tonight. It's a false allegation you put out there. How about defund the sheriff's office? How about defund the sheriff's wanna... office out of Deltona, Commissioner? How I did... about that? Oh, I'm going to get to that. Okay, one. well, go ahead. I'm, okay. I can't wait to hear it. Because I've never stated that I want to defund the police. I believe we need to support our law enforcement officers, and if that includes, you know, whatever it takes, we got to give it to them. Now, you also stated that the Deltona commissioners, past and current, want to kick you out of Deltona because we can't control you. Can, can you please enlighten me? Who is it that wants to kick you out? And, you know, what do you mean by can't control you? The because I don't take phone calls about tearing up traffic tickets or unarresting people. I don't do that, okay? I play how the game is played. The rule, you get arrested, you go through the process. I don't have backdoor meetings. I don't have other politicians call me in and say, hey, you need to have a meeting and smooth this over. Did anybody from up here do that, sir? That, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you have gone around. This is what the information we're getting is. It's time for a change, and the sheriff's office needs to go. That's the information coming to me and my deputies. Okay. That's well, the information. I never said that, and I okay. was called out on that, and I want to make it clear. I've supported Volusia County Sheriff's from day one. And I mean, you're slandering me out on social media, you're slandering me on the news media, and it's just not accurate. It's sir. not accurate what you did to Deputy, uh, Deputy Thomas sir, either. I did nothing to Deputy Thomas, okay? We had a constituent come up here. She gave us her account of the story. I showed some empathy for her, and that is it. I never convicted Deputy Thomas. I never said prayers for her. You know, I have an issue. Actually, you want to bring that up. I wasn't going to mention that today. You said you had had this video, and you've reviewed it however many times from Sunday. Why didn't you come to the commission or the city manager and, and, and let us know what you thought about that? That's not my responsibility. I was given a complaint. We investigated the complaint. Your constituent, knowing it was a lie, refused to cooperate with our investigators for two weeks. And then before the commission meeting, drops the form on a deputy, swears to it, and then they come to the podium and they unload on us. That's what happened. And, and how do you hold us responsible for that just because I showed a little empathy and compassion? There's a thing called trust but verify. Trust but verify. They accused the deputy of groping her. They called the deputy pervert. They called him all kind of names. And you sat there and took it like he's always doing. when this guy gets up there and screams and hollers and follows you around with a video camera. I wasn't listening to that guy. I was listening to Miss Tammy, okay? That's the only person I listened to on that. Okay, because she was the one that is the alleged. How could you not listen to him, sir? He gets up and starts spouting that. How do you not listen to him? Oh, I can hear him, but there are certain things I will hear, and there are certain things that I discard, and I was listening to Miss Tammy. All right, it, well, you know, that's going to bring me to my next question is, um, you know, and just for the record, I've never stated that Daltona needs our own police department. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Thank you. It's quite actually the opposite. And there's several people out in the audience that can attest to this, that when I was campaigning, and even after I was elected, I was approached on this topic about Deltona getting its own police department and what were my thoughts on it. And I've always stated, Volusia County Sheriff's Office has done a good job and Deltona does not need its own police department. Now I've stated that time and time and again, I've never said anything different to that. Now I've always supported your organization, I really have. Now, which brings me to my next question, which is you know, what you were talking about when you referenced Deltona having its own law enforcement. Um, on the Mark Bernier show, I'm going to quote you on this because you used my name on it. Go for it. I mean, you stated on the Mark Bernier show, Sheriff Chitwood stated, and I quote, that Sosa guy who I never talked to, who I know for a fact other city commissioners don't even know this, and has instructed staff to do another study. Now, let's break that down. That Sosa guy. Mm -hmm. I'm the only commissioner in Deltona named Sosa, so you got to be talking about me. Okay, and I agree. I don't think we've ever said two words. I've seen you in passing, but that's about the extent of it. And you know for a fact, and the other city commissioners don't know this, and hell, I didn't know it till June 3rd either, till I heard it, that I've instructed staff to go ahead and do a study 
about Deltona get it in its police department. I, I, I'm just curious, where did you get that information and what staff member instructed you that I wanted a study done? I was told by a staff member in this room that I'm not gonna divulge their name, and then I went to a couple of the commissioners and said, you guys are doing another study? And they said to me, what are you talking about, study? I'd like to know what staff member, because to be honest with you, I've never said it. Well, if somebody comes to me in confidence and gives me some information, I'm not gonna reiterate that. So I picked up the phone and called and talked to the other commissioners when I saw them out and about and said, hey, is there a study going on that I need to know about? Is something going on I need to know about? And they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. Another study we're doing? That was from your peers on the, on the dice. Well, why didn't you call me? If you're gonna call me out by name, why not call me and ask me, did you request a study on this? And I could have flat out said no, because I haven't. I mean, you're throwing me under the bus 10 times and backing over it. All right? Trust, but verify. Thank you for yes. whoever said that. You, you, excuse, you, me, excuse, excuse me. me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ms. White? Uh, this know, is the first. This is the first. This is. This is your first warning. One more outburst and you will be removed. We have, a, we have a commissioner and a presenter speaking. It's your first warning. That goes for anybody else as well. Now, you know, my thing is this is the first time you and I've talked, and unfortunately, it's not a very good way to start off a communication. And you Ms. know, White? I, I'm hoping going forward, we can work as a team. And if you have a question about my, my integrity, like Ms. McCool said, I've got a phone number, I've got an email, I've got a, anything you need to reach me by, I am more than able to meet people. I will meet and talk with any and everyone about any concerns that they have. I hope that applies to my deputies next time somebody comes up and lies about that them. That definitely applies to everybody. Okay, that's and a good I deal. And I do want to thank you for packing the room with your deputies tonight. I think this is the fullest crowd we have except for when it comes to rezoning. <laughs> Very good, Commissioner. All right, thank you, Very sir. Very good. And, and to all your deputies out there, I sincerely appreciate your efforts. I really do. So, you know, this is just a major misunderstanding that got blown way out of proportion. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. You know, um, I have worked with the Sheriff's Department even before, before I became an elected official. I have worked very closely with past captains, past um, deputies here, working for the community, helping um, with the Hispanic communities, helping with youth here in Deltona. I have worked with the Sheriff's Department, including Sheriff Chipwood, with other cities. I have traveled hours to other cities to help the Sheriff's Department with other communities in the Hispanic um, areas. And I, want, I will continue helping the Sheriff's Department as long as they need my help, because these are the people that put their lives online without asking us who we are, who we believe in, or who we want. They're out there helping and saving our lives. My families, my children, my friends. So I just want to say thank you to all the deputies and everyone standing back there with a uniform. And I want to thank you, and whenever you guys need my help, I am ready to help. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, Madam Mayor. Commissioner Brad, or Vice Mayor yes. Bradford. Yeah, does anybody else want to may I speak? Uh, yes, there's two more, but you're next in line because Commissioner McCool has already spoken and then I'd like to say something. Okay. Sheriff, we have always had a very open relationship. I've been able to ask you questions. You've answered my questions. We've worked together. I've worked with your deputies. They are awesome, every one of them. And if my comments in any way made your deputy feel that I was accusing him, then I do apologize. But what I'm saddened about right now, is there's only one person who has to be happy, because I don't see him in the audience, sitting at home, is the person who has achieved their goal by putting the sheriff against the commission and the commission against the sheriff by everything that's going on. That's what saddens me the most out of all this, because we are a strong community. 
and we're gonna get through this. And I don't know, I, I will tell you, I have personally do not want us to defund. We, we need the sheriff's office. We appreciate you guys. And I just want you to know how much you all mean to us and the residents and the businesses of Deltona. Commissioner, thank you, I appreciate those comments. And I can assure you, as I speak for everybody standing behind me and myself, there will not be, we will still be doing our job 101%. We will still be involved with all these community things that I, that I didn't talk about. We'll still be involved in crime reduction. We still wanna help move the city forward. Because you can't move it forward if it's not safe. No, I agree with you. And like I said, I think, you know, if they achieved anything, they've achieved what they're doing, what they've done over the last couple of weeks. And that's not what we're about. Dalton is about working together with our partners and the sheriff's office. You guys are our partners. We wouldn't be Deltona without you guys. And you guys are guys and women, not leaving any women out of here, but you men and women, you know, we appreciate you all and everything that you give every day. You give your all for all of us. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner King. Sure, if you know that uh, I am, have never been a proponent of the uh, metal detector that's at the front door. Uh, you're very much aware of that. Um, I, I will say that I did comment at that meeting that uh, I would like to see that thing go. Um, and if that, is, it, but that did not have anything to do with the situation that we had last, last meeting. And I just want you to know that. Um, you know that um, our um, service organization uh, honors and respects um, and awards our law enforcement uh, officers every year, and we will continue to do that. Um, we need you. We need every one of you uh, in uniform, um, and we appreciate what you do. Um, that will never change as far as I'm concerned. So I just want to let you all know that and put that on the record. Commissioner, I appreciate your comments. We're, we're, we don't debate the metal detector is your job. It's, right. it's not our job. Whatever you do, we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to follow the direction that's given to us. Exactly. Commissioner McCool. Thank you. Sheriff Chitwood, I would also like to clarify something. Um, you and I spoke about it, and um, I alluded to it. <coughs> In the video, and, and I want to, to perceive that by saying this, that first of all, you've brought up, you've had uh, some, we have had as a community some serious issues with mental health and substance abuse that we've been dealing with. And I think that you know me well enough to know that I have been screaming about this for the last three years asking for state funding to come uh, to be funded so that you could do your job so that you wouldn't have so much of your job to do. I think that you know where I stand on that. And I would like to clarify something else in my remarks because this has been brought up too. You have brought this up, Sheriff, and I just want to clarify. When I spoke about this issue, sir, part of what I said was taken out of context. I was very pointed in my response that I personally, I believe that your deputy did nothing wrong. And I believe that where it went off the tracks is when we talk about someone stating that they were a victim of trauma, sir, and I understand that in your line of work that you have false reports, that you have people that use that as a shield to get out of trouble, that you have a lot of decisions to make on that. I understand the climate of how that works, okay? As a victim myself, okay, of violent and sexual trauma as a child, I was stating that we do not get to dictate how someone responds to that and what their going through at the time, okay? I think that also if a pink color crayon triggers a woman because that's what she was holding when her molester came into her bedroom that we have to understand that that is their trigger and their trauma, okay? We're gonna let, agree to disagree on that. Let me be perfectly clear when I say this, that I said based on my trauma 
the work that I have done, okay, that was not a trigger for me. What was done was, it, it went way out in left field, first of all, because of the people that were involved, sir, and I think that we all know that, right? It, it, it came to a head. And moving forth, I just want to make sure that you and your deputies understood why I was saying what I said. I spoke from personal experience, okay, and not someone that had access to that that video at the moment. And you and I talked about that when I was out of the country, okay? And we agreed to disagree on that, right. all right? So I would hope that at the end of this evening that I understand you better and you understand me better. And more importantly, I hope that our officers standing out here understand that we want you in Deltona. And at the end of the day, we have to do our fiduciary responsibility and I hope that we move forward, sir, and there's no more of 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 this. It we need we need money from the state to get you where you need to be to handle some of the tragic things and, and that's what I want to concentrate, not political theater. Okay. So thank you for coming this evening, sir, so that we could air this out and have transparency. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Commissioner, I would like to let you know that that point that you talk about, that we chose Deltona for a pilot program with mental health that starts to begin training next week, where you're gonna have iPads that are contacted to a licensed, con yeah, in contact with a licensed mental health counselor. So when we go on these calls, we're able to get advice and use that as a first step. And nobody else is doing that, but we wanted that program to be launched here in Deltona. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Chef, sure, I just want to say thank you to you, to your deputies that are here, and those that are not here. Thank you for what you do every day. Thank you. And Sheriff, I would just like to say a few words, not only to you, but to the deputies that are in the room and to the citizens and residents of Deltona. You and I had a conversation after this incident first happened, and I sent you an email, an email apology. And I, to you and to the deputy who at that time, I did not have a name, did not know. So for, I'm going to also read that apology because that is what I said I would do at the next commission meeting, which is now. And this is, this is what I wrote. Sheriff Chitwood, I would like to personally issue an apology to both you and the deputy involved regarding last night's discussion of the Stucks complaints. Mr. Peters attempted to defuse the situation as a personnel matter. Unfortunately, the nature of the allegation was so egregious that I, among others, felt the need to respond. In hindsight, and upon further review of the facts, it is quite apparent that the allegations were unfounded. I will also issue a public apology at the next commission meeting. And that is what I said the next day. So, and I said I would read that, and I mean it sincerely. So, talking about defunding the police, defunding the sheriff's office, and having Deltona look in their own, look after their own police department. It is, to my knowledge, and I've also asked Mr. Peters this, no one has commissioned a study at this time to look into Deltona getting their own police department. There's no study that has been commissioned because that would have to go, come to the entire commission and that would be over the cost of what the acting city manager has permission to do, study would be over the $25,000 limit. So there is absolutely no study going on right now. Sheriff, you and I have had many discussions over the role of the sheriff's department, of your role and of your deputies and your leadership here in Deltona and how amazing it has been over the time and how much of a supporter I am of the sheriff's department and of your leadership and that of your officers and deputies. When you became a constitutional officer and we had discussions over funding and over what the contract would be, now that you are a constitutional officer and basically to a degree in charge of things, um, I'm on a Volusia League of Cities Advocacy Committee, a Florida League of Cities Advocacy Committee, and the one thing I brought up to them because of the legislation going on about defunding the police and so forth, my question to them was, would 
since the sheriff is now a constitutional officer due to Amendment 10, and if the budget changes and we kept the same level of service, and should there be a reduction, would that qualify as defunding the police? And would that point the finger at the city of Deltona for defunding the police? And it was an intriguing question, and I was told to seek legal counsel. You and I talked about right. that. And because of that, it is my duty as mayor and as an elected official in this city to make sure that the public perception of what the city of Deltona funds and how we support the sheriff's department is clear. There's no defunding of the police. There's no defunding of the sheriff's department. There's never been a question, and we're coming up to budget right now, as to the level of service that you provide. And you're transparent and you're open and you provide us, just as you did today, with the statistics before COVID Comstat, And I think that the city of Daltona's residents seem, from my feedback, to be extremely happy with the Sheriff's Department services. You also have been very, very active in many things, as you stated, mental health. Uh, last week, you were part of a Volusia League of Cities uh, meeting and discussion, and you were there to talk about the nexus between animal abuse and violence toward humans. And I just want to say that the incident that happened at the Methodist Children's Home the other night, last week, uh, with one of the individuals there, almost has that nexus, almost connects that through things that happened with one of the individuals in Deltona and in Orange City prior to what happened that night. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow commissioners, what we have in Sheriff Chitwood and his staff is law enforcement that doesn't just come here and patrol the streets and solve a crime. You have people that are innovators. You have people that are always looking for the next new facility, the next new program. We're recipients, like he said, of grants. The sheriff participates in so many organizations throughout the county, throughout the state, that many of us don't even know about. And it's true, Sheriff Chitwood, your job is to police and to provide service to every citizen of this community and not just a select few. And I personally, for myself, my family, and my role as mayor, want to thank you, and I want to thank every one of you out here, and also those of you that are not out here, for your service to the city of Deltona and the community and the county of Volusia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, can I extend an invitation? All commissioners, please go out on ride-alongs with your deputies and get out there and see the light from inside the windshield. I think you'll find it very beneficiary. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Uh, now you guys got to go to work. Thank you, sir. Okay, now we are going to move on to the business portion of our meeting. Item number six, ordinances and public hearings. Item 6A is a public hearing, ordinance number 03-2021, amending and revising the provisions of chapter 46, article 11, firefighters pension plan, the code of ordinances of the city of Deltona by amending section 46-29, finances and funding management, amending section 46-31, contributions, amending section 46-33, benefit amounts and eligibility, amending section 46-34, pre-retirement death, amending section 46-35, disability, amending section, section 46-44, minimum distribution of benefits, providing for compliance with chapter 2019-2021, law of Florida, providing for compliance with the SECURE Act, providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, and repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date. Mr. Peters. Madam Mayor, uh, this item is a um, element that began under Dr. Cooper, uh, carried over to me. Uh, this is an effort to uh, strengthen the uh, firefighter pension. Uh, as you all know, we have a pretty significant, um, uh, I want to call it deficit, but a uh, future 
uh, deficit uh, with regard to pension. The uh, effort here is to shore that up by um, having enough money going in to keep the future obligations in check. Um, we were waiting for the actuarial to be done to verify uh, that this was in fact correct. Uh, we received it just a few weeks ago. Uh, it confirms that by increasing the firefighter portion, um, we would be in a much more stable position with regard to our pension moving forward. So we're recommending that uh, you all uh, pass this uh, ordinance on first reading. Okay, commissioners, do you have any questions? Commissioner Sosa? Yes, I just, I, I just want to get clarification. Um, now, the firefighter pension, their contribution rate, they've agreed to go up to 11.4%. I want to make sure we're looking out for first responders on that as well as our residents. So they have agreed to up their percentage from 8% to 11.4? That is correct, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, commissioners, any other questions? No questions. Um, we'll go ahead and open the public comment portion of the hearing. Please let, um, read the two individuals that signed up to speak. Kurt Roman and Patricia Dunlin. Kurt Roman, please. So my name is Kurt Broman. I'm the chairman of the pension fund. Um, we just wave in support and we're here to answer questions. Patrick Dolan is the other speaker. He is the actuary. If there's any questions other than that, we don't have anything. Thank you, sir. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Roman? Uh, Commissioner Ramos? No, not for, okay, I'm sorry. Patrick Dolan, please. Same? Okay. Okay, that closes the public comment portion of the hearing for this item. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There is no questions, and I, I move, I hereby move to adopt ordinance number 03-2021 at first reading and schedule second and final reading for June 21st, 2021. The acting city manager has the authority to make corrections, of scrutiny errors, and the like. Second. second. Okay, properly moved by Commissioner Ramos. Who did the second? Was it Commissioner King? Seconded by Commissioner King. Skip, would you like to read the ordinance? Ordinance 03-2021, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Deltona, Florida, amending and revising the provisions of Chapter 46, Article 2, Firefighters' Pension Plan of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Deltona by amending Section 46-29, Finances and Fund Management, amending Section 46-31, Contributions, amending section 46-33, benefit amounts and eligibility, amending section 46-34, pre-retirement death, amending section 46-35, disability, amending section 46-44, minimum distribution of benefits, providing for compliance with chapter 2019-21 laws of Florida, providing for compliance with the SECURE Act, providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Thank you, sir. May we vote, please? And because um, Vice Mayor will vote oral uh, voice vote. Commissioner Villa Vasquez. Yes. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner McCool. Yes. Commissioner Ramos. Yes. Commissioner Sosa. Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford. Yes. Mayor Herzberg. Yes, motion passes unanimously. Now we'll move on to the next item. Seven is old business, of which we have none. So we'll move on to item eight. Eight A is a discussion regarding the metal detectors and wands during commission meetings. Mr. Peters. Um, very quickly, um, I request to remove the metal detector was brought up at the May 17, 2021 regular commission meeting. Because it was not noticed to the public, the commission agreed to present it for discussion uh, tonight. Uh, in the aftermath of several very contentious city commission meetings beginning in June of 2019, where discussions of weapons and guns were reported to city staff, commissioners, 
uh, and BSC, uh, to city staff commissions and, and social media. The city manager arranged to have metal detectors placed outside the commission chambers and hand wands at workshops in the second floor workshop at the time. Um, as recent as several weeks ago, there have been postings regarding weapons in commission meetings uh, if the metal detectors are removed. Um, in consultation with our insurance company, the acting city manager is electing to keep the metal detectors in place until such time that any perception of a risk to the participants in the city meeting have diminished sufficiently. Your options are to keep the metal detectors or overrule the acting city manager and direct the removal of the metal detectors. And we are recommending that we keep the metal detectors. Okay, thank you, sir. Commissioners, do you have any comments? Commissioner Sosa and then Commissioner King. Yes, Mr. Peters, as, as you know, I've, I've been uh, pretty forward with, with you since, you know, I became elected about the metal detectors. Now, these metal detectors, if, if we go back, was back in, what, June of 2019, when we had a city manager at the time that was charged with eight counts of felony voter fraud. We had the chambers packed, probably 100 plus people, and the city commission that was up here at the time failed to let her go. That created outrage among the residents. A lot of residents were very vocal about it, okay? Now, at that point, the city manager at that time and maybe some of the commissioners that elected to keep her felt for their safety. That city manager is no longer here. I personally have never seen anybody come into this commission chamber with a gun, with a knife. I've never seen anything on social media about guns being present in the commission chamber. I know I keep hearing hearsay, oh, so-and-so had a gun, so-and-so had a gun, but that's exactly what it is, hearsay. I mean, unless we have proof that it, there is a direct threat, we just had a community strategic, strategic planning session where we want to go ahead and we want to bring community feeling to our community, okay? We want to be able to pack these chambers with residents that give us their input, okay? I, I mean, the first thing, when that metal detector went on, went in there, I was a little furious too. I, I didn't see the need for it. And to be honest with you, if we're afraid up here of somebody out there carrying a gun that we may be in fear of our safety, then maybe we up here are doing something wrong. So I personally don't have any fear of anybody out there carrying a gun. I've never seen it. You know, the, the biggest weapon I've ever seen in here was a shovel at one point. And, you know, I, I, I just, I, I think it gives a bad perception coming through a city meeting, especially when, when, when we're engaging in town hall meetings, all right? That's where we really want the community, in our town hall meetings. I wanna hear what people have to say. And we're gonna wand them, or we're gonna make them go through a metal detector. I, I just don't agree with that. Now, if we have law enforcement presence, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if, if we wanna keep you know, an officer out there, Officer Hernandez is great when you come in and greet him. I look forward to seeing him every Monday. I mean, if we wanna keep another officer in the back there and we keep another officer here by the desk, I'm fine with that. But, uh, but I think it's time for the metal detectors to go. Commissioner King. As I said a few minutes ago to the sheriff, I have never been a proponent of the metal detector being out there. Um, I've said to Mr. Peters that at this point that I really believe that the metal detector is a monument to Jane Chang, and as long as it's there, we'll always remember her. Um, I, I, I don't think that it's necessary. Um, any law-abiding citizen, I hope you all heard what I just said. Any 
law-abiding citizen would know that the law states that you cannot bring a firearm into a commission meeting anywhere in the state. It's against the law. So law-abiding citizens obey the law and you don't have guns coming into this chamber carried by law-abiding citizens. What we do by having a metal detector there is to ensure that law-abiding citizens aren't carrying a gun in here. The people we should be concerned about are the people who are not law-abiding citizens. And most of them have a plan. They've been here before and obeyed the law, and they've decided to come back and target police officers and then target whoever else they want. What we do by having a metal detector out here is to declare that this is a gun-free zone and everybody inside is a fair game or target for some law-abiding uh, law person. Um, quite frankly, there's laws that are, or bills that are being looked at that would allow commissioners, guess what? To carry a gun at commission meetings, to carry a concealed weapon. Those haven't passed yet. I hope they do. But until they do, guess what? We're law-abiding citizens. I carry a gun everywhere I go. That's what I do. I don't have one right now. You know why? I'm a law-abiding, thank you. I'm a law-abiding citizen. And the law says I can't carry one into a commission meeting. I think it's unnecessary to have the metal detector there. I don't think it's unnecessary to have police officers here, same as we did before. I do believe that, that what we have been presented this evening is hearsay. Um, it was reported to the city staff that people are carrying guns. Well, who reported it? Who saw the gun? Did anybody see one? Or are you all just making it up so you can have a metal detector out there? Those are the questions that need to be answered before we make a decision here. Let's tell the truth. Let's be open, transparent. Who is it that's saying that people are bringing guns in here? Because I haven't seen any. And if you are bringing one here, you're breaking the law. And if we find out that you're breaking the law, guess what we're going to do to you? We're going to call a sheriff on you. You're going to go to jail. Because that's what happens to people who are not law abiding. I'm still against it. Um, I understand, um, I understand the interim city manager's position. Um, I understand that position, but I don't think that it's necessary for us to continue to have the metal detector here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Vasquez. Com uh, Vice Mayor, did you want to speak? Yeah, I can speak after Commissioner Vasquez if okay. you want. Thank you, Mayor. So I just want to clarify um, a comment that was made. I was up here when those metal detectors were put out there. And it was not just commissioners who requested them. It was also staff members of the city of Deltona who requested them, made them feel safer. Unfortunately, uh, the times that um, 
most of us new commissioners were welcome into this chamber were very hard, made us feel unsafe. And um, that's how everyone brought up the comment of we don't feel safe here, we need to be protected. Our staff who sat there, who was attacked from that chair, from, the, from those tables, didn't feel safe. And if our staff feel safe with, the old metal, with those metal protectors, then I am for them. Thank you. Vice Mayor. <clears throat> yeah, a couple items that I want to address on comments up there. You know, when after the metal detectors, and I was one of the commissioners that, from the previous when Ms. Shane was there, and I wasn't one that supported her, but yet I was still fearful. I was fearful not because I did support her, because I was fearful of the hostility in the crowds. There's been a lot of shootings. There's been a lot of instances across the world. And if we would have seen their concealed weapon, or I guess if we had our crystal ball to determine that they're law-abiding citizens, loved ones wouldn't have been lost. So I am for the metal detectors at this point. They're here. I did see even a survey on Facebook that was a unanimous by the residents feeling more comfortable with having them here. And if you have nothing to hide, you have no problem walking through them. Because if you have a problem walking through them, then I guess that means you have a problem flying. You have a problem going on a cruise. You have a problem going to, you know, different counties and through the courthouses. There's a lot of places that have them. So part of me is now thinking that whatever took place a few weeks ago was part of the reason to put get this put on the agenda. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Are you, we still have more. Go ahead if you if you're. Con I'm sorry. You're muted, no, Madam Mayor. I'm actually frustrated, and it's probably a good thing that I did mute. So I'm just going to leave it that I am in support of the metal detectors to protect our citizens, our staff and anybody who wants to come back to the meetings because we did lose a lot of people coming to the meetings because of all the hostility. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Ramos, and then we'll go to public comment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think I've, I've heard some things on this dice, and I think, again, I'm gonna go back to perception. If we want to perceive and make a monument out of something by the way we communicate things, then that's what's gonna be illustrated. I don't see those metal detectors, but just metal detectors. But if we continue to perceive and talk about the past and what that reflects, then that's what's gonna reflect. And that's what folks are gonna gravitate to. I guess my question also goes to our city manager. And that is, Mr. Peters, does this fall under your preview as city manager? Um, I believe it does. And let me just clarify one other thing. Um, this is not an easy decision. Um, but a lot of this is, um, and I have talked to, I, I believe just about every one of you all on this subject. Um, I own guns, personally. Um, I have been through numerous gun safety classes. Um, I am a very accurate shot. I have even challenged uh, Mr. O'Grady to a shoot off and he's yet to take me up on it. But the point being is, and I think what we're getting lost here is, because we have the metal detector, we haven't had a weapon problem. I would hate to be one of these deputies in this room with someone with a gun. Uh, this is not the room to be trying to take someone out or to take control of a situation. There are too many people um, in, in gun safety, you're taught you're responsible for the bullet from the time it leaves your barrel to when it stops. And I look around this room and I look at, if I were to shoot a gun from this location, how many people would be in peril on that line of shot? And so this is not the room to have somebody with a gun with bad intention 
and I would not want to be the, the good deputies in trying to stop the situation. So I just want to point that out. Thank you, Mr. Peters. And as far as law-abiding law citizens, if you're a law-abiding citizen, you won't have a problem with the metal detector because I'm sure there's other places that law-abiding citizens have to go through as well. Thank you. Commissioner McCool. Yes, I would like to say uh, uh, for myself, and it will be apparent in the vote, that I um, think that the metal detectors are a layer of protection. I think that there's a misnomer here that the layer of protection of having those metal detectors there are a, an assault on two-way rights, and it is not, because there are a lot more things other than guns that you could bring into a public where you could injure a member in the public. Um, it, it's not just about guns. This is not an assault on 2A. This is about keeping um, our public as safe as possible, covering as many people as we can. There are more ways to injure or harm someone than guns. And again, I believe that uh, law-abiding citizens um, won't mind. This is, this is not an assault on, on gun rights. This is because of the world that we live in today. One person can take out a lot of people, and we've seen insanity here in this very room that those are not monuments to Jane Shang. Jane Shang keeps getting brought up because people keep bringing Jane Shang up and memorializing her. That is not the mentality of, of me. I don't have that mentality today. I'm all about, I want you to carry your gun legally. I want you to have gun rights. You know, truth is, I mean, we live in a very big time of instability, and um, it is my job to um, keep as many people safe as possible. So, 2A advocates, this is not, I swear, an assault on your gun rights. This is about anything that would injure a member of the public. I've got a desk to hide behind back here. You know what I'm saying? I so, I just want to say that I wanted that to be said. Thank you, ma'am. And now we'll open the public comment portion of the meeting. Liz, please. Albert Bryan and then Tara Derek. Sorry. What she said. I'm like a doctor, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Bryan, please. Albert Bryan, Deltona. You know, this was a hard subject, very emotional subject for a lot of people. And I actually took the time to do a poll on my Facebook page, and I have a little over 1,300 people on my page. I know that's not very many. But you know, it's funny when you have 12% that actually come back on that poll. It's amazing to me. It really floored me because I wasn't ready for the results that actually happened. I had 72 people that wanted to keep those metal detectors out there. And you know the main reason what they said? because of the world we live in today. They don't trust other people. It's not about law-abiding citizens. It's about the people you can't trust. And you know something? When my daddy raised me, he told me don't trust that person I can reach out and touch. So I don't. That's why it bothered me when I had all those sheriffs in the back room back there. Y'all take and bring up Jane Shine. It's funny. You had a man standing right here that was presenting us stats on the sheriff. It's funny. I didn't hear any stats. None whatsoever. But he intimidated all us people in here with having all those sheriffs back there. Who does that remind you of? Talking about memorializing Jane Shine. Okay, now, let's get back to the subject here. Removal was only 24 people. 24. People didn't care because they don't come in here? because they don't trust you people, we're actually 29. That states a lot. That really states a lot. I trust those officers out there. I trust that officer sitting right there to save my butt. You know why? He's trained to save my butt. Those officers out there, they're trained to save my butt. That's why they're here. They're here for a reason. All that metal detector is out there is just an extra layer. So the females back there, they don't bring in those little metal files, you know, for the fingers. That's why they're there. Think about it, people. We live in a world 
where two 14 or 12 year old and a 14 year old kid broke into a house. The 12 year old boy pulled a big gun off a guy's shelf and shot it for detectives. The girl grabbed a shotgun, a girl with a shotgun. Think about that. It's not about law abiding citizens. It's about the idiots with the brains that don't work right. So if you want to remove those metal detectors out there, watch your insurance, I guess, go up from what this man over here says. That's all on you. But you know what? I've been here more standing here than y'all have. I've been here every single Monday night that I'm allowed to come in. When Mr. Cooper was there, I wasn't allowed to come in here for three or four months. But I've been standing at this podium longer than most of y'all have been sitting up there. I've been here more than most of y'all sitting up there have. And you know what? Those metal detectors, they don't bother me. You know why? I can drop my pockets in the thing. It don't bother me. Why should it bother me? I don't have nothing to be afraid of. What are you going to do to me? What is anybody going to do to me? Think about it. Tara? Hello. For the short people in the room. Um, Tara Dierico Del Tono, so um, I have to follow Elber. Unfortunately, I usually try to sneak in before him. But um, so in regards to the metal detectors, I, honestly, I'm kind of ambivalent. I've, I've gone on any given day, we should have them, to we should not have them. I came in this room completely ready to speak all about anti-metal detectors, and then I, I listened to Mr. King and I said, yep, that's the right thing to do, but then I listened to Mr. Peters and it's, no, that's the right thing to do. So it's, to Elbert's point, it's a tough decision, right? I don't think there is any right or wrong answer and I think the only time we're gonna know what the right answer is is God forbid should something happen when we wanted a metal detector. Um, but I'm also law abiding, so I'm never going to come into this building, whether there is a metal detector or not, with a firearm, which I do, full disclosure, I do own several of, but the law says I cannot come into this building with one, so I would not do that. So I have to just ask, you know, um, curiosity is, um, how many weapons have the metal detectors actually stopped? Do we, do we know? And I know we don't have the answer now, but I'm sure someone has the answer. And to me, they are more a sign of the times of an error that we're all trying to move on from. Um, but my humble opinion is, if someone wants to get in this room with ill intent, they're, they're going to find a way to get in this room, whether there's a metal detector at that door or not. Um, and that's, that's all. Thank you all. Appreciate the time. J.P. Pelletier? And then Kathy Bryan. I'm going to make this quick. This is the first time I've ever spoken, first time I've ever come to a meeting here. The reason I came was because I happened to be over the library catching up on the past newspapers, and I said, I got to find out what's going on in here. Um, I don't think I can add a lot to this conversation that's going on. I know what side I sit on, and that is that, um, like Mr. King said, I believe it is, he said, you know, if you're law abiding, well, you know, if you're not and you don't have the uh, metal detector, you can come in. I came in with a little pen knife, not realizing, and the officer took it out. I'm good with it. I didn't come here to hurt anybody. But on the other hand, I, th I think that with what's going on everywhere, people coming in with ill intent, it is again one layer of security and it's not all about you, it's about us back here also. And uh, I think everybody's just gotta lower it down a little. You all look like you're all uh, so emotional about the issue and <laughs> I don't know, this is my, uh, my virgin speech. I hope to come back again and, uh, you know, 
Boy, it's an education here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kathy Bryan, please. Good evening. I like the ballet, and whenever I go, which I go every once in a great real while, but when I go to the Dr. Phillips Center downtown, guess what I have to walk through? A metal detector. Stay or go. I, I agree with Ms. Derrico that if somebody's going to get in here to do harm, they are, but I think that might be a deterrence for anybody who comes in with a hothead last minute shooting. What I, what I would like and hope that and recommend is that if you, if you decide to keep it, make very clear what the rules are, how it should, how it should be preceded if somebody needs to be searched. That way, you don't get yourselves into what we had here the other week. I would also like to say, the next time something like this happens before everybody jumps with a knee kick reaction, you had a city manager right there who said, we're investigating. Take a step back, count to 10. We will look into it. A knee-jerk reaction doesn't do anything but sprain your knee. Mm -hmm. He's there for a reason, let him do his job. But I would, I would post signs out there and make sure that everybody understands this is the process. If you don't wish to go through this process, you also have the choice not to come. So, thank you. Thank you. Richard Bellick and then Manny Rodriguez. I'll do it, I promise. Oh, shit. Uh, the, thing, the thing that bothers me about all this is the hoopla, all the stories. I heard this, I heard that, this, that, that. I don't think them girls have ever been attacked over there. Somebody said they were attacked. When? They attacked the desk. When? Never happened. What is this? We're not children here. We're supposed to be grown-ups. Now, getting back to the Jane Shang thing, you know why Jane Shang stayed here. You, 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 Bob McFall. That's why she stayed here, okay? Now, when you get a rezone, you get a hundred some people coming into a place and saying, please don't do this, please don't do this, somebody's going to get mad. I mean, you talk about people, all right, I, I make outbursts. Sure I do, because I get pissed off. I ain't going to lie. I mean, come on. You treat the people bad, and you don't expect nothing to happen. Now, who is going to come in here with a gun with four or five police officers sitting around? I don't think anybody, but like the metal detectives, I don't have an opinion. That's up to yous. you. Whatever you want to do, you do. I don't have an opinion. But please, I'm going to tell you something now. I've been around this world. I was raised in a different life. And if somebody's going to do something to you, they're going to wait by your house or something for you. They're not going to do it in front of witnesses. Think about it. Bye. Thank you, sir. Any Rodriguez, please. Manny Rodriguez, District 4. This, uh, this is tough to follow those act yet to proceed in me. But the only thing I have is a question. Uh, I know you're concerned about the confrontation, confrontational crowds that come into this room and you're afraid that somebody's gonna bring a weapon and hurt one, two, or all of us. And I do appreciate the fact that I can come here on a Monday night and I feel secure because I go to the metal detector and I set it off because I got a metal knee. And I'm very happy that I'm safe in here. But I also come in here for the planning and zoning. And you're talking about contentious and confrontational people. It's the same thing. Yet there, you offer no protection to those people. So it's like you are talking out of both out of your mouth. And there's other meetings that goes on in this chambers here and there's no protection. There's no metal detector, and there are no deputies. That's all I have to say. Think about it. 
Ask yourself that question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Brandy White Daltona. I did have a question after hearing everybody speak. There is the mention of somebody being attacked over here. I know it was just brought up too, but I still am curious. Can we get a clarification on the statement that a staff member was attacked over here during a meeting? Um, and the second thing I want to bring up, which I guess I'll probably do under public comment, was uh, related to the CompStat meeting. Um, I, I didn't hear CompStat figures except for one, but a lot of things were discussed that we weren't allowed to comment on. So I'm just, you know, could I get some clarification on how things outside of CompStat were discussed with no public comment? Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, that, that closes public comments. I'm that closes the public comment. So, um, Mr. Peters and Mr. Fowler, um, would you like us to take a vote on this, whether or not to keep them? What is your recommendation? I know this is a discussion. Madam Mayor, if you concur with my decision, there's no vote required. The only thing you would need a vote for would be to overturn my decision. Okay, is there, then one way or the other, we're gonna go, have to go ahead and from what I'm hearing, it is a majority to keep them, but I feel that we need to formalize this and put this on the record. So would you please uh, go ahead and go down the line if you are for keeping them, then we do not, depending on what happens, just go down the line then, Liz. Okay, Commissioner Bela Vasquez? Yes. Commissioner King? Um, I first wanna give a little statement, and that statement is that I will stand by what I've said earlier, but I will also um, submit to the um, interim city manager's uh, position, and I will vote yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Although I'm really for him, I'll agree with the city manager. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes, and I would also like to have us review or have the city manager review the PNZ, as he said, and, you know, if we do need to have the funding for other contentious meetings as well. And Mayor Herzberg. Yes, so you have consensus to keep them, sir. It is my understanding that the special magistrate meeting does have uh, the, the the scanners there, sir, am I correct? For the special magistrate meetings, please just bring a report back to us for magistrate and P and Z, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, item B is just simply a uh, report. Um, at the last meeting, it was brought up by um, Mr. Stuck and Commissioner Stuck to express some concerns about the manner in which the magistrate was hired prior to 2018. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm asking oh. about, no, no, hold, so I'm sorry. Um, no, I didn't mean that. I meant with the, the metal detector at the magistrate hearings and at PNZ, what the gentleman brought up? Um, the last magistrate hearing, we had some, um, I, I don't recall if we had the metal detector there or not. As a general rule, we are trying to have metal detectors at all of our meetings um, um, and commission workshops. Okay, thank you, sir. That's okay, we'll move on to the next item, which Madam is Mayor. item. Yes. Um, I, I would like to have some clarification on that. Um, according to statutes, there's nothing that I have seen that says anything about having uh, metal detectors and, and prohibitation of uh, weapons or firearms or whatever at any other meetings except those that are listed, one of which is a commission meeting. PNZ meetings are not listed there. Uh, magistrates, I don't believe, are listed there. But I, I think we need to go back and look at the law. And we just, we just can't, you know, start putting up, okay, we're gonna have for this, have for that, have for something else, if it's, if it's, if it's not legal. I, I, it is my understanding that it is at any public hearing, which is, would include, I'm not sure if that includes the boards or not. I know that includes commission meetings, school board meetings, and, and so forth, the requirement for firearms. So I agree, Commissioner, we'll go ahead and pull that statute and see 
Um, and that again is under the purview of the city manager. So if you would report that back to us at the next uh, commission meeting in two weeks, that would be helpful, sir. Okay, you good, Commissioner King? Okay, item B, request for approval of resolution 2021-26 to set aside $200,000 of general fund balance for legal fees in anticipation of the Hickory Oaks subdivision lawsuit. Mr. Peters. Yes, ma'am, this item is to formalize the um, decision you all made at the last meeting. Um, as you all know, we no longer do the, uh, what I call the, uh, uh, the full-blown motion that was used in the past to give the city manager authority to move money uh, because the dollar amount that's being transferred is more than $25,000. It requires commission approval. Uh, this item is to move the $200,000 to put into a fund uh, for the lawsuit regarding Hickory Lakes. Uh, we are hopeful that we will be nowhere near that amount of money. Um, but we just want to make sure that we have the money there in case it's needed. Okay, commissioners, do you have any questions for, um, and this, the funding is just to be moved into um, an account for legal fees, and then you will report back to us regarding those fees and, and, and the fund balance and so forth, correct, sir? Okay, commissioners, if you don't have any questions, we'll go to public comment. Richard Ballard. Two hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. I mean, what, what what is this? This I don't understand this. I thought the developer was going to foot the bill. If the developer, if he didn't lie to us, you don't need the two hundred thousand dollars, and we will lie to then. There's no other explanation. We were lied to. You said the developer was going to handle the lawsuit, the funding. But now it changed. Now you're taking $200,000. For what? You don't need it, right? The developer's going to do it. That's what you told us. So in other words, when we come here, we're going to be lied to. There's no other explanation. It's a lie. What else is there? You said the developer was going to handle the funding. That's not true now. Now it's changed. Now you have to take $200,000 of the taxpayer's money. Brandy White don't want to pay it. Lila Lim don't want to pay it. What's the story here? We expect you to use lie whenever you want. When it, when it fits your bill, you lie. Well, what happened? You lied. So in other words, the people can't trust you. And then you're worrying about a metal detector to stop somebody coming in here from a gun. I mean, come on. I mean, what, 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 what world are you in? Another, another stratosphere or something? Seriously. You lie to the people, and then you expect the people not to get mad. You specifically said, we won't cost El Tona a dime, the developer will handle the lawsuit. Now it turns out it ain't true. Ain't that right, Mr. Fowler? No, sorry, it's not. It's not? That's what you said. What, do you want to lie again? Uh. What's the story? You all know that. Everyone up there knows that I'm telling the truth. You said the developer would handle it. Now the developer ain't handling it. I mean, come on, it went back to the same thing. He's not Jane Shang. Time after time, he's lied for her. When, when, when she pled guilty and paid fines and everything, and it was the same as a conviction, she was on probation, you still voted for her to keep her. I'd like to know why. I think what's going on here with this 189 houses, I think is we're all getting a gift out of it, and that's why his four years are pushing so hard for it. And you are pushing hard for it. So how much are you getting? You gotta be getting something. Nobody would push this hard for something. Time after time, people came here, emails, this, please don't do it. You had, you had officials come here, Volusia County officials come here, it's just not to do it. You still did it, and you cannot tell me that you're not getting something out of it. You, you, and you. And motor mouth up there, bye. May I that close this public comment? Okay.
Brandy White, uh, this is actually regarding our Facebook group, Deltona City on the Move. There was a question of um, what exactly does our attorney cover and do for the half a million dollars? And um, if I'm not mistaken, you guys asked legal expertise before making that decision because that would have been the smart thing to do, so hopefully that did occur. And if you guys were given the okay that it was legal to do and it comes back you weren't, what happens then? Can I please get those answers this time before you vote? Because you never answer my questions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, that closes the public comment portion of the hearing. And yes, Madam sir. Mayor, yes. Uh, let me address uh, some of the questions. Um, the particular lawsuit had three elements as part of the reason why we're asking for the 200,000. Um, the actual lawsuit is, is two parts. One of them is the actual rezoning, um, the decision that was made, what have you. That will be covered by the developer's attorney. There is a second component that has to do with the lack of availability of a, a provision under state law in our ordinances. Um, that particular part of the um, lawsuit had a five-day response requirement. Uh, we did not have time to allow the uh, developer's attorney to get involved at that point. We had to take an affirmative response within the five-day period. So we will be following that through the process. The last thing is at the very end of the lawsuit is a demand by the um, complainant that the city pay for all their legal expenses. And since we do not know what that legal expense would be, while we do not think we will be responsible for it, it is in the lawsuit and we had no control over how much money that would be. So it is imperative and, fun and fiduciarily responsible for us to set enough, aside enough money. Uh, if, the, if we go through the lawsuit and it's not spent, that money will return back to the source that it came from. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other comments by commissioners? Then we would go ahead and need a motion. Commissioners, please. And if no one wants I to I hereby move to recommend approval of the budget transfer to move $200,000 from general fund balance to litigation for anticipated legal expenses and upon approval authorize the acting city manager to execute the budget transfer. The acting city manager has the authority to correct grievances, errors, and the like. Second. Properly moved by Commissioner Avila Vasquez, seconded by Commissioner Ramos. May we vote, please? Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Yes. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner McCool. Yes. Commissioner Ramos. Yes. Commissioner Sosa. No. Vice Mayor Bradford. Yes. Mayor Herzberg. Yes, motion passes six to one. Now we'll move on to the next item, which is item C, consideration of appointment of five members to the Charter Review Committee. Uh, Mr. Peters. Um, Mayor, commissioners, we have had several discussions over the last several months regarding uh, revisiting the, um, the charter. Uh, technically, we're supposed to do it every period of time. We're slightly early right now, uh, but the uh, the next opportunity is the 2022 election um, without us having to pay for a special election. So this gives it time to go through the process of reviewing the charter, making recommendation, come back to the commission for consideration to put it on the ballot. And um, so we advertised this um, and we have received 10 applications. Uh, the charter provides that this charter review is a five-person group. So our recommendation is that you each rank um, each person one through 10, uh, turn it into Joyce and she has a spreadsheet, a magic spreadsheet over there where she would put the numbers in and then the, the five candidates with the lowest scores uh, would be your five selections. 
Okay, commissioners, um, stand by. Commissioner Sosa. Uh, Mr. Peters. Just for clarification, the five with the lowest scores will be our five candidates. Now, are we gonna do two alternates on that as well? Um, I'm gonna leave that to you all. I would recommend one to two alternates in case somebody has to drop off. Okay. So what you will have is you'll have five that you will select, and then you will decide if you wanna take one or two more to be the alternate. Okay, I, I think it would be a good idea to have a couple alternates if anybody else agrees. Would you like to put that in form of a motion, sir? Yes. To have five members and the amount of alternates you'd like? Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion for the Charter Review Board to have the top five members selected and then add the next two highest alternates to the list. Is there a second for that? Second. Madam Mayor, uh, just as a, a point, if you can direct me a point of order, I was going to make a motion to uh, table this for this evening based on this. The application, as I read the application, this application is like the application for other boards that we have, which are important. But it's my belief that given the importance that we are redoing our charter, there, I would like to see an application more geared toward this um, because, you know, I had questions um, as far as what is the experience, we're, re, we're redoing our charter, okay? What is the experience level? What is things like, have you attended city commission meetings and have, what is your, your involvement been in the, with the city? because I believe that whoever sits on this board needs to have a working knowledge of the city, uh, city commission meetings. The, I, I think that there needs to be a rapport with, built with residents regarding uh, what is important to our residents. Um, and I, I just think that if we could have just a little more time and table this until such time, because we're already talking about right adding things to it um, if that's if that's amiable to anyone. So, so Commissioner McCool right now we have a motion on the table and, and and to your point we'll get to that in a minute but one way or the other this commission is going to have to decide if they want to have one or two alternates I know the last time we did that we I believe had two alternates mm -hmm. um, and that attended all the meetings so before we go on further to your sure. your commentary I would like to address Commissioner Sosa's motion, and your motion, sir, was to have the five and then two alternates? That is correct. And is there a second? I second it. And Commissioner Vasquez seconded that, so let's clarify right now, five members, two alternates, and that is going to be, no matter what else happens, that is going to be the process that we're gonna go through. So, is there anyone that has a comment on that? If not, Vice Mayor, are you okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and vote on, yes ma'am. Richard Ballot. Is this on the, but is this on the motion of five and two of, the, of that? He wants to talk on every single item. You wanted to speak on every single, Mr. Bellich? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's go ahead and vote on Commissioner Sosa's motion of five members, two alternates. Commissioner Villa Vasquez? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Herzberg? Yes, motion passes seven to zero, so no matter what, we will have five charter review members and two alternates that will be appointed no matter what the process. Mm -hmm. Commissioner McCool, if you feel the need to table this and you wanna make that in the form of a motion, you can. That's the next process if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, and that will come, we're, we're gonna have to vote on that. So you can always take your shot, however you choose to do that. <laughs> All right, uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like second. to make a motion for us to table uh, this particular item until such time as uh, we have been able to talk with uh, the city manager regarding just a little more in depth application for this position. I'll second the motion. Second. Okay, um, so Commissioner McCool has a motion to table, and is that Vice Mayor, did you second that, as well as Com Commissioner King as well? Okay, Vice Mayor. 
So are you leaving the tabling open-ended, ma'am? Time specific, Madam Mayor? You, would you like to do time specific? T time specific so as not to dawdle over this, but I would think, um, I would take direction from the city manager as to when uh, he think it, it's best, just so that we can have time, just to, some more in depth in the application process. Um, if you want to do it time to a time certain, I would probably make it the uh, first meeting in September because we would have to put an application together, put it back out for advertisement. Um, it took us about 60 days to get 10 applicants. So, you know, 1st of July to have an application form, 1st of September to have 10 applicants. Uh, so we would potentially be the first meeting in September, which would be... September 7th. Yes, September 6th you. is Labor Day on a Monday, so it would have to be Tuesday, September 7th. So um, I would recommend, if you're going to table it, I would recommend uh, uh, to table it till uh, Tuesday, September 7th. Okay, we have uh, Vice Mayor and then Commissioner Ramos on the board. So I was wondering, you know, since you mentioned it took 60 days to get those applicants, is it possible that with the 10 applicants we have, that we send them the, the new application form to fill out with the additional questions on it? That'd be proper, sir, I would think. At least notify them that a new application would be coming out. I mean, that's common courtesy. It needs to be. We would notify the uh, existing applicant that there's a new form. Okay. Okay, and can you clear, I'm sorry, Mr. Peters, could you clarify uh, that by doing this, does that open the window for new applicants or not? Yes. Could you ask that again, please? I would like to ask that if by tabling this, this opens the window for new applicants or not. Um, Commissioner McCool, that's really your call. I would assume that if we put it back out, it would open the, uh, the door for new applicants. Thank you, yes. Okay, um, Commissioner Sosa, did you take? Yeah. You're up next? Okay, I'm sorry, I, I didn't, he was on, but then it disappeared. Okay, Commissioner Ramos. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, my question was gonna be that to uh, uh, Mr. Peters in reference to how long did it take us just to get 10 applicants? Um, so you gave the answer that 60 days. Uh, to your point, Commissioner, I get it, uh, but September 7th, um, if we do, if this does pass, I think that's it, um, because it took 60 days to take 10. Those that are interested are interested. Those that are not are not. And at some point in time, we have to make a decision to move forward, because if not, we're just pushing this down. I think we have 10 residents that definitely want to be a part of this, so I'm okay with even moving forward today. Okay, Commissioner Sosa. You know, I have to agree with Commissioner Ramos on this. You know, we've had 60 days for this, and it's been advertised. We've got 10 applicants. They've all sent their applications. They're all here. I've read through them all, and, you know, I would be willing to make that decision today. Okay, thank you, sir. No other comments? Any members from the public wanted to speak on this item? Okay, then we'll close the public comment portion of this. So we have a motion to table to time certain to September 7th to provide for a new application, and it would be five members and two alternates. We have a motion and a second on the floor to table this to then. May we vote, please? Commissioner Villa Vasquez? No. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? No. Commissioner Sosa? No. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Herzberg? <laughs> I'm extremely torn because I respect the 10 people that put that application and took to ta the time to do that, and I hope that they reconsider. I vote yes. So the motion passes four, four to three, three to table to September 7th, time certain.
and apologies to those that put their applications in. Please reapply, and thank you. Okay, next item, item D, discussion regarding the special magistrate's contract. Mr. Peters. Madam Mayor and con Commissioners, um, at the last meeting there was a discussion uh, brought up by uh, Mr. Stuck and Commissioner Sosa regarding the, uh, how we uh, hired the um, magistrate prior to 2018 um, and the, whether the cases that were handled at that time were legitimate. Uh, we have gone through our entire files on this process. I want to remind you that when I came on board, one of the first things we did was change our purchasing policy. Um, and the other thing that we changed, um, and it was not so subtle, if we changed the motions that we regularly do now. Uh, prior to my coming on board, uh, we had the far-reaching motion that basically gave the city manager the authority to do about everything. Um, to sign the contract, transfer money, do whatever necessary for the furtherance of the, the uh, resolution of the ordinance. Um, since I have come on board, um, I have the authority to execute whatever you approve and make Grivner's corrections. Um, so back in the day, when the budget was done every year, uh, that wide-ranging motion was done gave the city manager the authority to do everything to execute that budget. If you had money in the budget for a special magistrate, you were also authorizing the city manager to execute the contract for the special magistrate. And that's what was done. A purchase order was done every year. I know there was expressed some concern that um, there was language that said that the contract for the special magistrate had to be approved each year, but um, it's our opinion that when the, um, the motion and the uh, acceptance of the budget was done, the commission was acquiescing the authority to execute those contracts to the city manager. As such, we believe that the uh, special magistrate process was done legally um, prior to 2018, and therefore um, the matter should be put to rest. Commissioners, do you have any comments on this matter? Commissioner Sosa? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all the documentation, and on every one I read, starting, you know, going back to 24, it says, you know, going back here, it said commission and staff discussed the verbiage of the original resolution, the resolution having to come back before the commission for approval and special magistrate pay at the same year. And then if we go through each of these, you know, basically it comes down and it says the initial term of the appointment was for one year and it, the, on this one here, it expired on October 5th, 2010. However, the resolution called for an additional one-year appointment at the direction of the city commission. Now, this was approved on the consent agenda for Charles Sino back in 2013. And then again, you know, we're going back to 2011. It says the same thing. It comes up for a resolution at the discretion of the city commission annually. Now, my concern with this is I, I think we went through several city managers at the time and did the ball get dropped on this because it didn't come before the city commission every time. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, that the city manager had put in there basically that she, she or he could usurp the will of the commission is basically what it comes down to. If we're on our motions, we're saying it has to come back every year and we're not bringing it back every year, to me, that's not a legitimate contract if the commission has to approve it annually. I mean, it, it, this is the one previous to this. If we could look at the most current one. I've got copies of that here as well. I mean, I'll, I'll read. Here's the actual resolution. And it says in section two, the initial term of the appointment shall be for one year from the effective date of the resolution. Additional one-year appointments shall be made at the direction of the commission. 
However, when the agreement was made for the special magistrate, when we go to Article 5, miscellaneous 5.1 term, the term in the agreement shall commence upon effective date and continue for a term of two years. So the city manager at that time basically told the commission, forget it, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, I'm gonna make it for two years instead of one year. And, you know, and it still says that the agreement may be renewed for three additional terms unless terminated or as provided within. So to me, that says that every year around December 15th, whether you're the city manager or somebody else is the city manager, this document needs to come, whether it's in consent agenda or as another item before the commission annually. Uh, Commissioner Church, I uh, uh, refer you back to my original comment, which is um, when the commission approved the budget, you know, it, even in the example you give of the two year, uh, the second year would be subject to funding. And so when the budget is done, the commission funds the special magistrate. The motion that was made at the time gave wide discretion to the city manager to execute that contract on behalf of the commission. Um, and, you know, under my view of transparency, I have been very open with you all that I, don't, I do not want that level of authority in a motion. Um, you know, will it happen going forward? No. But the question is, is it legal? And the answer is yes. It doesn't look good, but that's how the city was working back then with the wide-ranging motion that gave the city manager a lot of authority. You know, I still have to disagree with you on that point. If we're making a resolution and the initial term shall be for one year from the effective date of the resolution, additional one-year appointments shall be made at the discretion of the commission, not the city manager. And then when, when I go from this one to the, to the actual agreement and the number of years has changed from one to two, I mean, this was voted on by Commissioner Vasquez, Commissioner Bradford, King, Commissioner McFall, Commissioner Nobbit, Commissioner Ramos, and Herzberg. I'm not sure if they decided on a two-year term or one-year term, but according to this, it says one. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna leave that to you and Skip, but that's my uh, take on the uh, in, entire magistrate. Now, do I have a problem doing it for two years or three years? Absolutely not. If that's what the commission wants to decide, then so be it, let it be a two year agreement, let it be a three year agreement. But if we have an agreement that says one year, then to me that's what it is, one year and you bring it back annually. I mean, I know there's been a lot of change in the commissions or in the city managers and you know, maybe this got dropped and fell through the cracks, but you know, we need to address it whether it's, we're gonna make it a two year agreement or a one year agreement and bring it back in consent agendas. Mr. Sosa, under the uh, purchasing process, uh, when we do a purchase order, that is a contract. There has been a purchase order every year. Uh, there have not been any two-year purchase orders. So uh, because of the, uh, your concerns about the annual nature of it, um, there are separate purchase orders for each year. And as I said a few minutes ago, even if the city manager entered into a two-year agreement, the second year would be subject to funding, which would have been done by the commission as part of the budget process. So why did we make the resolution for one year instead of two, or just leave it at the discretion of the city manager? And you're, you're referring to the purchase um, process. Are you referring to the one you just brought before the commission or the previous one? Um, I am relying on our files and my staff. I was not here when those were done. Uh, so you're asking, you know, I can only rely on what's in the files um, and whether it followed the purchasing process at the time and the motions that were made at the time. And based on that information, I believe that we had legitimate contract with the uh, magistrates all through that time period. Okay. So is this something we need to bring forward to the city commission again and actually put it in a motion where it's gonna be for a two year deal? 
as opposed to a one-year deal. I mean, I, I, I wanna make sure that we have ourselves covered is what I'm coming down to. Mr. Sosa, I can tell you that in, in my professional career, uh, what I have typically done is two and three year contract with the option for additional year for a year for two years. So they're either a four or five year contract. That's what I have always done on engineering contract. Um, I did not, I have not done a magistrate agreement. Uh, we will be doing one, um, but um, that would be my preference. I cannot sit here um, and justify or amplify or anything regarding the past. All I can do is tell you that we had a legally binding contract during that time period. All right, thank you. Um, some, someone was on and then went off. You wanna go ahead? No, I, I was just gonna say, obviously there's no action required here. And we're, we're hearing from our city manager that we have a legally binding contract. Um, and I think if this is, is in consent, I think we, we can move forward. Okay, commissioners, do you have any other comments? Any, and if not, we will go ahead into the open the public hearing portion of this. And if you'd please call for public comment. Albert Bryant and then Richard Bellick, please. Albert Bryant. Elmer Brian Deltona. My particular thought on this is uh, for as long as I can remember, after we got rid of the quote unquote board that we used to have, we've had a special magistrate. And every special magistrate every year has to have his budget okayed. And I can tell you for sure, the last five years I've been really combing through your budget. And I've brought up discrepancies that I've had. Anybody that's been at the budget meetings will tell you I have. Just ask the fire chief, he'll tell you. Um, my personal thought on this is, if you have any issues with the special magistrate as a commissioner, y'all have every right to bring it up anytime, any place of the year here at these meetings. And yet it's funny, I heard crickets for 25 years, crickets for 25 years, I really did. Now, the first, what was it, five, six, 10 years, maybe even a little bit longer than that, all we had was a board. And then we went with uh, Mr. Sinico, or whatever, how you pronounce his name. And here again, I heard crickets from the commission. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So I guess they didn't have a problem with it because they also okayed it to the budget. They really did. Last five years, I'm gonna assume they didn't have any more problems with it because I didn't hear anybody bring a motion, a single motion until recently. Because every budget year, this has been okay. So if there was a problem throughout all this time, these people out here would have come up to this table and asked, what in the flock are you people doing? Still, I've heard crickets. So if it's okayed every year to the budget, you're making a vote on that special magistrate. You have to, because you have to okay that budget. So if you don't think he's worthwhile, it's just like that lawyer sitting right there. You have to okay his budget every year. Granted, his is 10 times bigger than the magistrate. Okay, maybe five, but whatever. Um, but you know, if y'all have a problem with him, all you have to do is tell him. The same with the magistrate. If you have a problem with the man, you gotta open this up and actually say, here's the problem I have with you. Mr. Sosa, I haven't heard you say that. I've heard, I've heard you, oh, 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 my time. I've heard you say that you've had problems with the contract, but these people okayed that contract every year during the budget. Now you haven't had a budget yet. Maybe this time you'll get a chance to okay it too. So I just wonder what all this is about the magistrate. I really wonder because you know, I've been in front of the magistrate. I can honestly say I've been in front of the man. I was in front of the board too. 
And you know what? I like the board a lot better than I, than I do the magistrate because I had five people to talk to. And it's a lot easier to get a decision out of five than it is one sometimes. Richard Bellick, please. Mr. Sosa, I think there was enough in there for you to question the whole, this whole procedure of the special magistrate. There was enough there for you to question it. You looked out for your constituents and the people at Deltona, and that's what a commissioner is supposed to do, sir, and I commend you for doing it, because you showed a lot of nerve, you stuck to your guns, and you're a man. Thank you, sir. Brandy White. Brandy White, Deltona. Just some questions that popped up in hearing everybody talk. So I, I, I want to understand this because although I agree with Albert that if nobody has brought it up, but there's a second side to that. If, if you're not aware, then you can't bring something up you're not aware about. So just saying that a, approving at a budget is an overall approval, not according to what that document says. And, and if that's the case, how many other things do we have ordinances for or procedures for where we're supposed to do something and it could just be overruled by a budget vote? I don't think that's how that works. You're approving a budget, not necessarily everything in there, if that makes any sense. How many of you knew that you were supposed to come back and discuss if you want to keep them every two years? My guess is nobody, because it didn't happen. But what is the point of having that document if it's not going to be followed? if it can just be overridden by a budget consent. Because there's a lot of us out here that do take the time and due diligence, but nowhere in that budget under magistrate did it tell me that there was a contract or an ordinance that said it should have been reviewed. Or trust me, we would have brought it up. So my question is, how many of you knew you should have been bringing this forward and just taking a quick yes or no, we're happy with how it is and the amount we're paying, because that's literally what the process says you're supposed to be doing. I'm a little concerned now to hear, though, that we can just override processes as a blanket by approving a budget, because that's not what you're doing. You're approving a, a figure and a number, then not a contract. So I'm, I think there's a lot of gray area here. You guys are starting to cloud, and if you're going to allow in a budget approval to be an approval of contracts, that's gonna go across the board, so you better be real careful what you're opening yourself up to saying you're allowed to do right now. Because it'll come up again with another contract. We were supposed to approve this. Oh, well, you did in the budget. We didn't know that that's what happened when you approved the budget. Don't we get to say so? I just have a lot of questions. If we have a document stating this is what you have to do. Nothing overrides that. And if it does, I'm going to be looking at a lot of ordinances, and you can guarantee I'm going to be up here with a lot of similar questions and wanting to know how in a, a budget didn't approve those two. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so looking back on previous agenda items, and I'm trying to actually find the budget actual agenda item. However, I did find when a motion was made and seconded and the motion was read, upon approval of, the, of this item authorizes any and all necessary actions, documents, or budget transfers to facilitate commission approval and further authorizes the interim or city manager to sign any documents necessary to further commission approval of this item. That was in the previous agenda items. And looking, that was not always there. That was changed about, I would say, three or four years ago. And if you look back at some of the things, for example, the last budget, the last budget cycle, uh, there was an item in there for $48,000 or $45,000, <clears> excuse me, it was a, was a sign in front of the Veterans Park, the electronic sign, and it hadn't been put in yet almost till the end of the budget cycle, and I had questioned, you know, why, why was that still going in in COVID and it had not gone in yet? Was that not something that we could wait? Well, it was approved in the budget, 
and it was 45 or 43 or $45,000. Since it was improved in the budget, it never had to come back to this commission. And currently, under Mr. Peters' leadership, that level of transparency is no longer. He is much more transparent, and it also is, speaks volumes to policies and procedures that were all internally done in the past and never brought to this commission, which would have been a, an actual personnel policy that was set to be approved December 1st and never would have come to the city commission because the, the memo was December as of December 1st of last year, 2020. And our only commission meeting in December was December 13th or the one in the middle of the, uh, the Monday in the middle of the month. So that was another policy or policy that would have gone through without commission approval. That's no longer the case. And as you can see by Mr. Peters bringing everything forward, he is far more transparent and everything that's above his allowance or even at that point or something that he feels needs to be up for discussion, he brings forward. Am I correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. I was just sitting here uh, remembering my staff rem telling me that under my policy that the commission agenda for the first two meetings in October are going to be uh, probably two binders thick because of all the things that used to be done purchase order wise because of the budget that now exceeds twenty five thousand dollars and we're going to have to bring them to you all. Uh, you all will find out in October how much stuff used to get done based on that motion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, this this item is for discussion and clarification. I hope that that has happened and helped. And Mr. Peters, we obviously expect to have any of those contracts brought forth. And I can also state that a lot of those contracts are not required to be brought forth from the contract or certain ones are. For example, the contract with some of the agencies that we contract with require they be brought forth and put in the form of a resolution. And it is my hope that we continue that practice because if you look at other municipalities and you look at the county on their consent agenda, it's loaded with resolutions of those type of, of requirements because an agency has required that, not necessarily the city. So thank you, Mr. Peters, for that um, explanation and changes will be here. Correct, sir? Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next item, which is item E, legislative intent to modify the process for liens to an administrative process. And that is also you, Mr. Peters. Yes, ma'am. Um, at the last meeting, we had a, um, a very um, uh, vibrant discussion regarding a request for um, uh, lien reduction on a uh, code enforcement case. Um, and it, Results in a lot of internal discussion and between the city attorney and myself. And what we wanted to propose is um, that we bring a ordinance back to the commission to change the lien reduction process to a administrative process. Uh, basically the way it will work is uh, once you come in compliance and you have been in compliance for one year, you will get a one third reduction in your lien two years of compliance, you get another third. Three years of compliance, your entire lien will be abated. If at any time during that three years you go back into violation for the same issue, the entire lien comes back. Uh, this is to ensure compliance over time, not a one-time compliance, not a compliance a week before you want to put your house on the market. Um, you know, we want people to be compliant with code enforcement, and we believe that this administrative process will aid us in our code enforcement process to achieve that level of compliance that we want over a period of time rather than a one-time thing. So we're recommending that um, we proceed with drafting the ordinance uh, for the commission's approval. Uh, I want to be totally transparent here. Uh, because this will be an ordinance, 
if someone wants to appeal the administrative process, they would have to come back to the commission with an ordinance to reduce it, which will require two readings. Uh, so it will not be a simple process to request a variance or an exception to the administrative uh, lien process. So that's our recommendation. Um, if you so choose, you will give consensus to move forward. Uh, if you're not interested, you would let me know and we won't proceed. Okay, commissioners, do we have any comments on that? No comments? Do we have anyone that signed up for the public? Richard okay. Ballard? <laughs> Anybody else? I didn't sign up for that. Can I take his spot? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I can't. He's from Philadelphia. I'm a Florida boy. He knows Joe Frazier. Uh, Mike Williams, 2889 Cottageville Street, Deltona. Been a resident here since 1985. On the liens, I'm in the real estate business. I personally manage about a quarter of a million dollar real estate business. For those people that have been wondering where I've been, I've been running my business, okay? That's why I haven't been to say the commission meeting. But anyway, on the liens, we see it all the time in real estate. And I'm gonna ask you this, Mr. Peters. When does that lien period start for someone? And can you give us some examples of liens? And when would the forbearance period start with a lien? We'll let him go through the public comment and then we'll address those. Okay. He'll address those. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, that Close. closes the pu uh, One more? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Close his public comments, Mayor. Okay, sir, would you like to address those, Mr. Williams's comments? Yes, ma'am. Um, the lien would start when the magistrate finds a uh, finding a violation. They will set the lien at that point. It may be $50 a day, $100 a day, whatever it is, until they achieve compliance. When they achieve compliance, we note it in the file, and the lien stops at that point. Um, the, uh, the property owner can pay the lien at that point, or they let it run. Um, and then, um, you know, once we note it in the file, let's say, for instance, the uh, magistrate finds somebody guilty and 2018, they come in compliance January 1st of 19. Um, the following year on January 1st of 2020, they would get a one third reduction. The following year on January 1st, 2021, this earlier this year, they would get another third reduction and then they come in January, they would have the entire lien abated if they stayed in compliance during that time period. So. The lien starts with the finding of the magistrate, and we note in the file when they come in compliance and it stops the lien at that point. Okay, thank you, sir. So, commissioners, um, we need um, a motion to authorize him to draft this ordinance or not. So, is there anyone that would like to make a, a motion to, this is to draft the ordinance, and the ordinance would have to come back for two readings. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that uh, Mr. Peters and staff draft a motion and come back to that with us in order to change the code. Second. Okay, it's properly moved by Commissioner McCool and it's properly seconded by Commissioner Ramos. Commissioner Avila Vasquez, uh, there's a motion on the table to ask Mr. Peters to move forward to um, go ahead and make them and create an ordinance and then bring that back to us. There's a motion in a second, so we're getting ready to vote on that. Is that, is that okay? Okay. Vice Mayor, you're good? Okay. Commissioner Bila Vasquez? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Herzberg. Yes, motion passes seven to zero. And now we will move to item F, the resignation of the acting city manager. Mr. Peters. Huh. Okay. Um, this is a difficult one. Um, I met with each one of you all back in March 
with a resignation letter at that time um, expressing my frustration. Um, I left those seven meetings feeling better that we had an understanding of how we were going to proceed. Um, we had a workshop on decorum. And a lot of that discussion was decorum amongst the commissioners. Um, I felt even better. Um, then we had the social media policy. And the original policy that was brought to the commission applied to the staff. And I believe Mr. Bryant came up and said that he felt like it ought to apply to the commission. The commission agreed and voted 7 0 to make the social media policy apply to the commission. And subsequently, all seven of you signed a statement that you would abide by the social media policy. For the most part, y'all have done a good job, except for two. Um, I've had staff people ask me, how can you hold me accountable to a social media policy that the commission put in place um, when they want to buy by themselves? And that was a starting point. The, um, the contract that I drafted, I spent a lot of time on it, um, included the ICMA Code of Ethics. A big reason for that is it, it sets standards for me, but it also sets standards for the commission that's not covered well with the charter. Um, and so earlier, a week and a half ago, I guess, I um, you know, sent you all notification that I plan to resign based on um, breach of contract, uh, specifically tenant number 10, which basically says that the uh, commission not to interfere with me. And this is important because the charter says interfere with staff. It doesn't mention the city manager. But I'm not the city manager. I'm the acting city manager. Um, I'm technically probably still the public works director. Um, but it, it would create confusion, but the Code of Ethics covers that confusion. Um, as I explained to every one of you all, the definition of interference can be extremely broad. Um, I think the examples I used to you all, specifically, was you see five Deltona water people on the side of Saxon digging a ditch to get to a broken water line. It's 95 degrees out. They're sweating like crazy. In your effort to be nice, you make a U-turn, you go down to Wendy's, you buy, I didn't mean to advertise for Wendy's, sorry. <laughs> um, you go to Wendy's, you get an iced tea, five of them. You take them up to them, you hand them out, you sit there for five, 10 minutes, tell them what a wonderful job you, they're doing, how proud you are of them, that they make the city of Deltona a great place for the resident to live. It's that interference. Um, if one of your least favorite people saw you, they would say it's interfering because you kept them from working for five to 10 minutes. I call that good intent interference. Then you have a code case, and the, the people are struggling with the staff to get compliance. Uh, you reach out to a third party to come in and help fix it. Nobody checks with the city. They do the work, but it doesn't meet the code. That puts me in the unenviable situation of do I continue with the code violation because it's still not right, or do I say, geez, I got a commissioner that got involved. It's really gonna look bad if I say, you're still not in compliance. So we let it go. 
Is that interference? Yeah, that's a higher level. But then you got another form of interference. Um, you have a personal problem with how code enforcement uses the David system from FDLE. Um, rather than bring it up at the dais for the commission to discuss it and make a decision, much like we did on several items tonight, well, I will tell you, this is why we do it. Uh, you can overrule me. Um, but no, the commissioner goes on social media and first of all, puts out inaccurate information regarding the David system we have, uh, saying that it's the full-blown David where, you know, you see pictures and everything, rather than the, the dumbed-down version that we use, just to be able to ascertain whether cars at somebody's house, whether they're doing engine repair work, are that person cars, or are they cars from other people? That's a legitimate function for code enforcement. But w by going out on social media and creating discourse, it puts a bad light on the code enforcement staff and the work they're doing. That is another form of interference. Um, and then when I have commissioners tell me that a fact, or that they're going to do something. And the fact that they told me is an out and out lie, or they say they're gonna do something and they don't, um, I have trouble trusting those people. Um, as my staff will tell you, uh, the very first thing I, second thing I tell them, First thing I tell them is I have an open closed door policy. You can come out of my office at any time, close the door. You can call me every name in the book, tell me I have lost my everlasting mind, and I will not hold it against you. I want that feedback because that's what keeps me out of trouble. And I have a lot of employees that have taken advantage of it. I got, I got some citizens that have taken advantage of that. And I appreciate it um, because that's how I operate. But the uh, second thing I tell them is, once you lie to me, I can never trust you. And right now I've got two commissioners that I can't trust. It will take time to regain that trust. And, you know, this is not a decision that I come to lightly. Um, I've struggled with it, obviously, if I, talked to y'all once before about it. Um, Mr. Fowler gave me a swift kick in the ass. He said I was too principled. Um, and I am. Um, I'm dead principled. Uh, <laughs> I've always said the engineers don't make good city managers because in Florida, engineers cannot lie in a public environment or in a public document or we can lose our license. So my profession has a very high standard. Um, and I think what Mr. Fowler was telling me is I'm applying a standard that applies to my profession to everyone as opposed to uh, accepting reality. Um, the second thing is another thing. Um, anybody that's ever seen my email from the city computer under my signature, <clears throat> it's a term up person it is the motto for my college. Loosely means that I may serve. And that had been my calling card my entire career, is I am here to serve the public. 
I want people to believe in their government. I have worked in government all but one year of my career. And it is extremely important for people to have faith in their government. And I feel like my role is that. And when I was preparing for tonight, in my mind, I sure as hell don't have a script. Um, I was struggling. I think every one of you, you, the commissioners know, I would have Saturday breakfast with my former pastor, my best friend, and he keeps me grounded. And um, Lutheran pastor, we were talking about the liturgy for this week, and it was Mark chapter 3, verse 20 to 35. For those of you all that are not religious, it is basically the passage that a house divided cannot stand. And I thought, well, you know, that's pretty interesting timing. So I went to church on Sunday, my new pastor, and he started the sermon. And the title of the sermon was Ants in the Jar. He had given this sermon back in uh, September. <laughs> um, when he was still in New York. Because, you know, he knew that we were going to have a very contentious election. And the basis of the story is that you can take 100 fire ants, put them in a jar with 100 black ants, and set it on the table, and they will coexist until you shake the jar. Who shaked the jar in Deltona? Agitators. Who are agitators? Um, I'll leave that to your judgment. Um, but the point is, we allow, you know, my job is to keep that damn jar on the table unagitated so that the fire ants and the black ants can get along. And you know what? If this city would do that, leave the damn jar on the table, we would be one hell of a city. Amen but we keep agitating the jar. And it's not just a few, it's all of us. We all agitate the damn jar. And then we spend time trying to calm the ants down so that we can put it back on the table and move forward. And my resignation is in recognition of the fact that I don't feel like I can do my job we're agitating the jar way too often. Um, I have a trust issue, and it makes it very difficult to me to perform a job. And we have various levels of interference, as I said, well-intentioned interference, getting in the middle interference, and then creating strife interference. And uh, with that, I have offered three options. And under my contract, if I resign, I go back to being public works director. Um, and the first option is we make it immediately. Uh, and you would appoint somebody to take over as interim. Um, the second option is uh, like August 19th, I believe. Uh, that will let it get through the meat of the budget. Um, and then you would put somebody in interim and start a search. Or third option would be December 31st, and we would begin the national search process for the city manager. So with that, I will uh, stop and uh, take any questions. Commissioner King and then Commissioner McCool. I'd like to wait before I say anything. I'd like to make a motion. So, if okay, else let wants everybody to speak. else talk. Okay, Commissioner McCool. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Peters. 
I would like to first of all say that as it was when you were water department head, as it was when you were asked to take this job, as it was three weeks ago, as it is today, I would follow you into fire. That being said, I'm one of the reasons I believe that Mr. Peters, and I would ask him outright if I'm one of the reasons that he is tendering his resignation because of my agitation. And I would like to proffer to you, I can either ask Mr. Peters or I know what I have done to stir the jar for Mr. Peters, and I'm willing to state that in a public arena so that you know what my sins are. <clears throat> As a new commissioner, I come from an entrepreneurial background. I am a woman-owned business, and I've worked in a male-dominated business for a very long time. With that being said, I am used to solving problems. I am not used to bureaucratic red tape. I do not very, I do not very often follow people because I am paid to lead, and that's what I do. I come from an activist background, which is a double whammy, and in sitting down with Mr. Peters, I was informed that there are two people that usually don't make it in politics and, or as it were in my position. Those are entrepreneurs and activists. So I am stricken with a double whammy of that. There is no growth without change, and there is no change without mistakes, and I have made my fair share of them, but I sit and I look at my constituents, I look at Mr. Peters, and I look at my fellow commissioners by saying, where I have been feared is a procedural thing. I believe that one of the things that Mr. Peters is talking about is that I CC'd a water department employee because we were working on a 91-year-old resident's water bill that had gone and I had been asked to meet with her and was trying to get the problem solved. And it was my belief that Mr. Peters was inundated with frivolous bullshit, pardon my French, public records request, okay, that was keeping him busy and it was making him crazy. So that's, that's some of the stuff that our constituency does not get to see. And I am one of the first people that will stand up for First Amendment rights, people's rights to see what goes on behind their government, to speak, to know. I'm an advocate for that. However, behind the scenes, Mr. Peters has had his hands full without a assistant city manager, and I went into his office one day, and this well-organized man who usually puts every one of us to shame in organization, uh, his desk looked like he felt. And I felt awful for him, and I took initiative and did not consider that I was hurting the position instead of helping. The second one of my sins, most recent sins, and what Mr. Peters is talking about is me lying to him because I was counseled about my social media policy, in which I usually do not comment on things that go on with the city. However, I do comment on generalities that align with my personal philosophy and what I believe about certain issues, social issues, responsible development, growth, how people are treated, but I never aim an arrow at the city, ever. I have never said anything about my city in a disparaging manner, nor any of my fellow commissioners, nor my city manager, nor my mayor. And you will not hear me say that. I dare say that I have never done that as a sitting commissioner. But I do not change who I am. I am a team player and I am learning and there's a huge learning curve going from where I am to being where, where I need to be. And I will stand up and I will take ownership of that. So Mr. Peters, as far as being one of your problems and having lost your trust, I apologize. I did indeed tell you sitting in your office that I was gonna do away with my social media and create an alternate universe in which I could express personal opinion. And as I thought about that, I thought that how hypocritical of me when I tell everybody to be open, honest, and transparent. And I understand also which which post that you're talking about, sir, and going back and reflecting. And I am just sitting here today broken over your decision. And it is my belief that it is not only my agitation, sir, but it, it is your belief and your ability to handle a wide berth of things in which your shoulders were not broad enough for, and I do not think that that is a sin nor a crime. I believe that with the right help in there, sir, helping you handle, that this would have went 
a totally different way and with some a little more patience with those of us who don't really know what we're doing yet. I've been in office yet a year and I have learned a lot, but I still have a lot to learn. So in being part of the reason, sir, that you decide to leave the city and my part in that, I cannot speak for anyone else's part in that, but I apologize to you publicly, I've apologized to you privately, and I think that it's a huge loss for this city for you to quit before the miracle happens. I have a huge belief in the city of Deltona. I have a huge belief in your leadership skills, but I also would be less than honest to say that I feel abandoned by you. And I cannot go back and fix my past mistakes, sir. I can only learn and move forward. And I honor your decision and whatever you think is best for you mentally, professionally, and spiritually to do. And in being unselfish, would support you and respect you no less than I do today for your decision. And I wanted you to know that publicly. You are a good man and you are a good leader. And I believe that with more help, sir, that this would be a different job for you. To my residents, that I have caused or been a part of causing this to happen, I apologize to you that you are losing this city manager. And I will take this and I will grow and I will try to be better. That's all that I can promise you. I cannot correct what I did. So I just, you know, on my dips. Thank you. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's unfortunate that we are at this crossroad. We've been given three options and there's three things that I can think of from what I've heard from Mr. Peters. Here's an individual, whether you like him or not, can do the job and has shown that in the short period of time that he's been here. wants to do the job, because it's not just about doing the job, but can, can you want and do you want to do the job? But the third point is the most unfortunately point of all. While I appreciate your honesty, Commissioner, and ownership, I think it's sad that the third point is that we don't allow him to do the job. And the sad thing about this, this didn't happen overnight. He's had meetings with every single one of us. And it's a shame. It's a shame that we have put ourselves and our city in this situation. Because I can't see who wants to come here. We continue to be the stumbling block to our own city by the, our behaviors. And again, I appreciate your honesty and your ownership, Commissioner. But at some point in time, does it take this? Did it have to take our city, our interim city manager to say, I'm done for us to see the light? And I know the question has been out there. Everyone that's been asking, who are they? Who are they? And, and there's all kinds of name, your name, my name, all kinds of name out there. Who's creating this interference? So for me, for purposes of transparency, I ask you, Mr. Peters, have I interfered in your function? Thank you. Um, no, sir. Commissioner Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. In November, I think it was, um, there was a motion made here on this floor, down there, to get rid of our former interim city manager. I voted against Mr. Peters. I really did. 
I felt that our former city manager, interim city manager was doing a good job. Considering that he was going through the same struggles that Mr. Peters is going through now. So I voted against Mr. Peters. But during the time course, I started working with Mr. Peters and put all my resentment to the side, put all my negativity to the side. And I trusted Mr. Peters, something that I feel that the people who put him there did not do. I trusted Mr. Peters to come to him, which is what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm speaking for myself, which is the procedure that every commissioner is supposed to follow. You have a complaint, you address it with the city manager so that you can both together come with a solution of who he feels is the better person in the city, the better staff in the city to resolve that residence problem. And the most important thing should be to please the residents and get their problems resolved and not waste two or three hours arguing in the office with Mr. Peters as to how it should be done or who should do it. That's his decision. That's what a city manager's or interim city manager's responsibility and description of his job is. So I trust Mr. Peter. I, 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 I have known, he proved to me, and he knows that the first thing I said to him was I need to you need to show to me, you need to make me trust you in what the job that you're doing. And he did, he's proved me wrong in a lot of things that we spoke when I first had my meeting with him. I trust him, he has come through for every issues I've had in District 3. Not all the time do we laugh when we meet, we yell and scream at each other, but I walk away from that meeting, not all the times agreeing with what he's saying, but accepting what he told me because he convinced me that what he decided is the best way to resolve a problem in the city. I believe, strongly believe in chain of command. I believe that once you break that chain of command, you lose respect. You lose respect for the person on the top and you lose respect for the person on the bottom because you bypass that middle person. And that's Mr. Peters. I don't think there's anybody better to know who and what the department can address and resolve our city problems. Um, Mr. Peters, I'm very sad to see you go. And I'm going to echo Commissioner Ramos' request because I have been sent snapshots of comments on Facebook naming me as one of the corporates of the reason why you're leaving. So I want to clarify that. Madam Commissioner, um, you have consistently um, directed uh, your inquiries from constituents to me for action. Um, I have consistently reported back with the facts and I think we have a, a damn good track record on getting uh, your issues resolved. Um, and you and I have had the conversation about how important it is that I rely on my staff to get things done because it's also, as a manager, and it gets back to the interference part again, as a manager, I need to know when I give an employee an assignment, do they get it done? Do they get it done correctly? because how else can I assess my employee performance? And I can tell you that just in the short time that I've been here, uh, you have a staff to be proud of. Um, I know this staff gets denigrated a lot through the years. Um, I have said, and you know, it, it's true, that we have a lot of PTSD people on staff um, from the past. Um, and so what I have been trying to do is create a nurturing environment for our employees to work in. Uh, that's part of the reason this decision was very difficult. 
um, because you know I have had some conversations with employees about um, stepping up to the next level, getting them to training, to um, you know elevate. Um, I know that was one of the things you criticized me on in my evaluation, um, but I have been having those conversations and it will shock you, the number of people who are not interested in moving up to the next level in succession planning because of the history of the city, the commission, and prior city manager. Um, I've had a couple people to say, the only way I would try to move up is if you stay here. Um, but, you know, once again, that's why it's important that things are funneled through my office. Um, you know, Sandy and Sharon do an incredible job getting this stuff out to people following up. Uh, we got a new software package that's going to allow us to, to keep track of it better. Um, but, you know, I am very proud of the employee uh, to a person. When we ask for things to get taken care of, they get taken care of. Um, and so, um, you know, you have not interfered, ma'am. No, you have, uh, when you get an inquiry, you say the typical line I think you use is, uh, I am forwarding this to Assistant City Manager John Peters for his action. And then I acknowledge it and I usually respond to the person that you are sending to me uh, that we, I am turning it over to, uh, Phyllis is gonna kill me, Phyllis Wallace and uh, Tom Kioffe and Stephen Danskin for uh, a stop sign that was down. Um, and you know, I know that people are gonna take care of it. Um, but you know, no ma'am, you have not. Thank you, Mr. Peter. I'm happy to hear that I have done my job the right way, which is what you're looking for. Thank you. Commissioner Sosa. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, Mr. Peters, I gave you a very good review. I think very highly of you, um, everything you've done so far in the city. Like I've said many times, you stepped into a position that had years and years of issues to try and get resolved. Now, I, I know during our workshop, there was a comment brought up that, you know, you're consistently busy putting out fires. I, I, I totally agree with that because I bring him a lot of those fires because residents come to me with issues that have not been resolved. And I will go to Mr. Peters, and I do continuously follow up with Mr. Peters. We do our agenda review every other Thursday. We probably sit there for two or three hours. We don't really talk about anything in the agenda. Basically, we, we, we talk about life and the issues that our residents are having, and I want updates on how we're handling these issues. Okay. Now, I think Mr. Peters has done a good job bringing transparency into our city, and I really do. Now, I know you mentioned David. When you refer to the David post on social media, he's referring to me. David is an issue, it's a software program, and it has a lot of sensitive information. Somebody brought it to me that code enforcement was using that. I had talked to Mr. Peters multiple times about this issue. Never once was I told it was a dumbed down version of David. Okay. It was only a couple months later that I was actually told that it was a dumbed down version. And honestly, I pulled a public records request from the state of Florida to find that out as well. Okay, so, you know, if it's interference for wanting to do right by my constituents, you know, I can't apologize for that. If I feel that people's rights are being violated, I need to look into it. That's part of my job. I'm out here to look out for everybody, and that is what I'm here for. Um, you know, other than that, I, I think you and I have had a pretty good working relationship, and, you know, yeah, I'm sorry to see you tenure your resignation. I was really looking forward to you to take the city towards the next step. I, I know this wasn't a long-term position for you, especially with the charter, you, you, you could not be the actual city manager the way our charter is written. So with that, uh, you know, I, I, I will sincerely miss you if uh, you decide to leave any sooner. 
Commissioner King. Oh, Vi Ma Vice Mayor, did you want to speak? Or Commissioner King, do you want to let her speak or do you want to go? I know you've been on the board, she Commissioner. You've been waiting. She said go like that. Vice Mayor? <clears throat> I guess that means me. No, go, go ahead and let King go. That's fine. Right. Mr. Peter, we have several conversations. Um, I told my constituents in District 1 uh, that I would never quit, that I would be here for my full term. We saw people on the dais that quit. For one reason or another, they didn't, didn't want to stay, couldn't stay, couldn't think they could do anything, they left. I promised I wouldn't, and I won't. I don't want to see you go. You ask for a re review after the first six months, you got that. And I thought that it was a very good review. Um, I think the average was 4.2. That's about how much? 3.71, okay. So 3.71 is still about 85% uh, approval. So um, the commission that sits here I think believes in you. Personally, I don't believe we've had a better city manager in 10 years or more. Yeah. And quite frankly, because I am who I am and I'm not gonna quit, I want to encourage you not to quit as well. And because of that, I'd like to make a motion. And I'd like to move that we table this decision in regards to the resignation of the interim city manager until the first meeting in January 2022 to allow ample time for him to reconsider his request for resignation and to allow this commission and its members sufficient time to more clearly understand their authority and their duties. The duties and, and authority of the city manager and that position, and to in good faith show their willingness to work together to move this city of Deltona forward. That is my motion. Second. Proper, properly moved by Commissioner King. And, and I second it. Mm -hmm. I did. Vice Mayor. Well, I was actually going to make a motion as well, a little bit different than that, but close. I, I appreciate Dana's apology. And what I'm disappointed in is that I'm not hearing from Commissioner Sosa that there was an error made and that it's gonna be corrected. And that's not something we can have continually happen, you know, time and time again, or we're gonna be back at the same boat again and again and again. So I don't know if it is training for commissioners or what it is. Now, I did have a conversation with Mr. Peters where he felt that I had overstepped my boundary and that I was assisting somebody with mulch and I corrected him and let him know that I had, the only involvement I had was they told me, hey, by the way, you're my commissioner and this is what I've done. But I was not any way involved with that situation, which he apologized and said, no problem. But what I feel needs to be addressed is if we have commissioners who are stepping on a line and don't want to take the necessary change or make the necessary changes, then we need as a commission to address that. So my motion was actually going to be that we address 
the cause and the problems and the situations, and we asked Mr. Peters to stay on. Vice Mayor, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, are you, we're, we're gonna let that vote go through and then if, if Commissioner King wants to amend his motion or if we want to address that, um, if I would take the liberty, uh, one of the, the items we talked about tonight was the Charter Review Committee. And as Mr. Peters has pointed out, the Charter is extremely weak on any policy, any procedure, any ramifications for interference, whatever that may be. And maybe if this commission would consider that that be part of the charter review process to really look into the charter and create a, a policy and a procedure to address these things because our charter doesn't address that at all. It's extremely vague and it basically leaves any type of malfeasance up to the definition of the state and it shows no procedure in dealing with that whatsoever. Is that a possibility for you, Vice Mayor? That I guess is it a possibility for Mr. Peters that how do we go about correcting this and avoiding this and addressing it and happening again? Because what I don't want to have happen is it continues to go on and on and on and he decides to stay and then he's still going through the same problem. So as they say, for every action, there's a reaction. So if you're not gonna change and abide by the rules, then as a commission, we have to make sure that we do it. We're supposed to be setting the example for staff. And just like he said, staff's coming to him saying, hey, commission signed this oath and they're not abiding by it. So we have to abide by those same rules and regulations and we have to enforce them as a staff no matter how hard it is. You know, so we either got to say, like Commissioner Cole said, hey, I did it. I was wrong. I ate my air. I'm, I'm going to do better. We can't just say, oops, it's okay and let it keep happening. We got to correct it. Mr. Peters, did you want to comment on that or would you rather not? No, let me comment. Mr. King, um, Commissioner King, go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me comment on that. Um, I, let me, let me come on, let, on that, Mr. Peters. King. I don't think I need to amend the motion. I think the, men, the motion can be amended just to, or can be voted on this, just the way it is. Um, I do think, Mr. Peters, I, I need to say this. I, I guess I don't really need to, but I need to say it, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't like to call myself a religious man, but I do have a faith that I try to live every day. Um, and, and I'm reminded uh, of a uh, story in the Bible that I need to uh, mention, and I think I mentioned it to you already. You know, there was a time when, when uh, Jesus was uh, getting ready to go to the cross, and it was at Passover, and he had his uh, disciples with him. And he said that evening he, at the table with his disciples, he said, one of you will betray me tonight. And every one of those disciples went to him privately and said, is it me, Lord? Is it me? Am I the one? Am I the one? And I think we can make a motion here and pass this motion. And I think it is the responsibility of every single commissioner every week to say to Mr. Peters, am I the one? Are we okay? Am I going, are we going in the right direction? Uh, how, how can I help to make your job easier? That's what we should be doing because we end up creating problems that he has to solve, and when we create the problem that he has to solve, it takes away from him moving our city forward. This is not something that we have to air out. I don't believe we have to air it out any further than it's been aired out here this evening. I think that we need to, um, I think we need to vote on this, and I think that as commissioners, we need to get ourselves squared away and continue to move forward. And if there's anything else that needs to be done, we will change the charter. And if commissioners, young, old, new, uh, been here for seven years, violate the charter, then we can take action on it. Yeah. And that's what needs to be done. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, okay, Commissioner Ramos and Commissioner Vasquez, and then if there are no more commission comments, um, we'll go to public comment. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I think I'm all for the motion, uh, but I think um, Vice Mayor brings up some points. There needs to be some type of accountability. And, and Commissioner King, I get it. It's a personal thing. But I think sometimes when I spoke to Mr. Peters, I said sometimes things have to be done in the open so that we can move forward. And what I mean by that is, for those of us who quickly want to jump, is that too many times we have conversations with Mr. Peters and he tries to help us and we just don't get it. So sometimes we need to have these conversations out here and him tell us how he feels. And I think there has to be accountability because if not, we just continue to do it and we're here again in a few months from now. The other thing is that I think we also owe it to Mr. Peters to ask him. It's great. And we might have a seven to zero up here. But he clearly stated he no longer believes that it's possible to work with us. And I think we should take into consideration and not be selfish in making sure that as we move with this motion, that we also have his blessing. Because it means nothing that we do a motion, it passes, and Mr. Peter still does not feel good enough to work with this dice. Thank you. Commissioner Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I agree with what just about everything everybody up here is saying, but here we go again, you know, over and over and over and over, going over the same things over again. I think we all got it. I think we all got it. I think we all want him to stay, and I think that we are all going to work towards making his job better. I think we, and I just, I'm just calling, um, I just wanna make a motion to call a vote. And then if there is another motion um, by Vice Mayor Bradford, then there's another motion, but we have a motion on the floor that we can't just keep going, you know, around, around it. So I would like to call the vote, please. Is there a second for Commissioner Vasquez's motion to call the question? Um, Commissioner Vasquez, that, that's gonna die for the lack of a second, but to be clear, there's only one motion on the floor, and that is Commissioner King's motion. There's no other motion from anything else. And uh, I think that, to the point, I think that we need uh, Commissioner McCool. Commissioner King, are you back up? You two, and then we're gonna ask Mr. Peters to speak. And then we will go to the public comment, or public comment, and then Mr. Peters. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Peters, I just wanted to say that um, in, in voting here, in voting here, um, tomorrow is a new day, and next week is a new week, and next month is a new month. And I hope that um, in your answer to the city, I understand that this is weighed heavily on you. I understand that um, I understand that you have a tough decision to make. Um, but as as I sit here, I also believe, sir, that you have a lot of people that would walk into fire with you, uh, sitting on both sides of this dais, and I would hope that that would weigh on you. I hope that it would weigh on you, sir, that, um, that, that there has been a change up on this dais because at one time we had a dais serve where responsibility was not taken, and um, I think that you have instilled that into us. Again, um, I want you to also think that um, you, you have accountability and transparency out here in the open. You've been you know, batting this behind the scenes, not being able, I think, out of courtesy or whatever sense of duty to not speak your mind. And I mean, it's out. The dirty laundry, sir, is hanging on the line. And that creates accountability in its own self when people fall on the sword and, and um, put pride before, um, or put, put constituency and put the betterment of the city before pride, sir. And I would like you to consider that also. There is gonna be no fault and no one would think any less of you if you withdrew your resignation up until such time at the end of the year when we're talking about, we can you could make a decision then, sir. Um, but 
I am asking you um, on behalf of myself, and I will dare say my constituents, sir, if you would, um, you know, let us to reserve judgment. Um, at, by my accounting, sir, there are only two strikes here against me. Um, I still have a third one waiting in the wing, and I'm willing to, that I'm not using, but I just would like you to consider that because I don't see a soul sitting out here, sir, in the public that wants you to tender your resignation either. Um, so I, I just wanted to say to, to please reconsider this um, as we move forward. Thank you. Commissioner King, and then we'll go to public comment. All right, Mr. Peters, I'm gonna have to put you on the spot now. <laughs> because if you withdraw your resignation now, I can withdraw my motion altogether. But if you want us to continue, um, I, I would ask you if you would reconsider if we give you up until January of 2020 in our first meeting. So I don't know if you want to, or 22, if you want to, uh, if you want to answer that or whether you just want us to go ahead and vote. I don't think there's one person here that would want to choose option one or two. So no matter how you look at it, you're here till the end of the year. So, <laughs> why did I put three out there? Um, <laughs> um, I'm struggling. Um, one of the things that I think is absolutely critical is revisiting the charter, looking at the charter. I respect your decision tonight to push it off to September 7th, um, but that's getting damn close to December. Um, you know, so basically nothing's gonna happen with the charter until at least September. You're gonna have that organizational meeting. Uh, we'll be in the middle of finalizing the budget, so the charter process probably won't start till October. Um, and that is part of the problem. Um, that's the reason I put the ICMA code of ethics in my contract. Um, you know, I addressed a lot of things in my contract. It's 15 pages long. It addressed the fact I don't live in the city, and for that reason I can't be a city manager, but I had all the other authorities. It addressed issues that the charter I thought was weak in. Um, and I've been told by my Florida City County Managers Association that um, putting the ICMA Code of Ethics in my contract was a brilliant move um, because it does address problems that are in a lot of charters. Um, I'll be less than honest if I didn't say I was a little angry when Mr. Morton in Palm Coast two days later used Tenet 10 in his resignation. Um, you know, that's, that's his call but it was part of my contract. I'm sure it wasn't part of his. Um, but I want to believe that things will change. Can we just have public comment and let me think, please? Doug McDonald, Mike Williams, Albert Bryant, Tara DeRico, Richard Bellick, Kathy Bryan, Doug McDonald. Good evening, Mayor, City Commission, uh, Doug McDonald, 1494 Surrey Run Court, Deltona, Florida. Shame on all of you, every one of you, to put this man in this position that he is in. He is honorable. I'm not gonna pinpoint any specific commissioner. I don't know who's done anything wrong, but it's disgraceful. It's the saddest day in the city that I've been here for 30 years. I've never seen anything like it. You've been through three 
city managers or acting managers in 20 months. Three. He's probably the best one. And he's ready to walk out the door. Here, here's a suggestion, just my lifetime spent in, in these situations. Do all of you know how to be a city commissioner? Do you know how to act? Do you know how to treat him? I don't think you do. Or if you do, several of you here are guilty of misconduct in your treatment of this man and it has led him to this position. So there are seven of you up there. Two of them, have, oh, I guess, have been identified, but two are guilty of this misconduct. What about the other five? Did anybody try to report this? Did anybody try to get this corrected? Did anybody bring this to the authority? But who are you going to bring it to? He's right. Whoever said that, the city, the city charter is weak. It's a terrible document, and there's really nowhere for you to go with this. You certainly can't blame the mayor, and you can't blame any, any one of you individually. But you have to learn how to be a city commissioner. And Commissioner Sosa's idea of what he is as a commissioner would be different than Commissioner King or Commissioner McCool. And maybe that's what has led us to this situation right now. One more thing that was in the news journal this morning. I did not know anything about this. Uh, allegedly, the city owes uh, Dr. Cooper a large payout of money. No. I didn't know anything about this. God, if you owe them the money, pay them. And that will solve the problem. We went through the same thing with Shan. Remember that? And we certainly don't want to have to happen to him. So God bless all of you and try to do a better job. And we would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Williams, please. Mike Williams, 2889 Cottesville Street. Again, I've been a resident of Deltona since 1985. John Peters is what we call, in my world, and I'm in management and I've done that all my life, he's not a lame duck. The man has basically made his decision on what he wants to do. We can do all the hooplas and the juke twos and whatever we want to do, but like Commissioner Ramos said, the man, the trust has been broken. I think the commissioner is not here tonight. That's the main culprit in all of this. Maybe that's why she chose not to be here tonight. I'm going to just call her out, okay? I'm going to just no call personal, you out. Mr. Williams, no personal attacks. Well, they, they, they do it to people all the time, that okay? Well, they, no I, personal I, attacks. I got my shot, and I'm going to do it. The one person that's not here tonight, and I think she purposely wasn't here. Mr. Williams. All right, I'll stay Point on tap. Point taken. All right, taken. I'll stay on tap. I would accept John Peters' resignation tonight. The man is a lame duck, okay? You, you might have the title, but where is the work that's got to get done? Commissioner uh, McCool, you even said yourself in one in your earlier editorials, however you want to call it, you didn't think the man had the USPA to do the job. You said that. Am I correct? You are absolutely incorrect. Okay. All right. Well, it was, well, was it a shade of that? I will address okay. that. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, All right. All right. Then the other thing. Address the uh, comments uh, to the chair okay. or we'll be done. Uh, all right. Well, you know, Heidi, you know, that we're going to keep digging on all of this. This is just the surface of, of what's happening here in Deltona. That's becoming obvious of what's going on in our city now. Uh, I'm sorry to hear him, but if he's a lame duck, he's wanting to go, then let him go. Then who becomes, who runs the city? I always had a concern myself when the man was appointed the city manager, and also he was the head of public works. Those are two big jobs. We're talking about a city of over 100,000 people here. How are you going to do that? Okay. And obviously what has happened is some folk that showered all these great praises on him. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. He can walk on water. Then all of a sudden these people turned on him. Hey, uh, 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 Mr. Peters, 
like they turn on people before you, you had to know that if you didn't do what they wanted to do, and I know some things you did do that they wanted to do, one of them still sticks in my craw right now, Steve Rowland, who was our public, uh, our uh, construction guy, because I'm in the real estate business, I deal with, used to deal with Steve all the time, a great guy, but some people who felt that they didn't get what they wanted when they had a building built that was out of code, and Rowland said, no, I'm not gonna approve this, the word got down, do what you gotta do, to get rid of Roland. So tonight I'm saying, do what you gotta do, move the man on, get yourself somebody a temporary to run the city that knows about running the city. Give him a break. If he wants to go back to public works, fine. If it was me, I'd just step out of the whole thing, Mr. Peterson, be done with all of it. Albert Bryan, please. Albert Bryan, Deltona. Normally, you know, I don't get to say this, but wow. <laughs> okay, that being said, you know, I can honestly say I've had heated arguments with the man. Really good arguments, matter of fact. But I like to argue. That being said, he's one of the few that I've ever actually been able to argue with. I've been here 25 years. I've watched almost 15 managers come and go. And you know something? I can actually talk to this one. Out of all the others I haven't been able to talk to, except for one. That was the very first one we had. He would actually answer my emails. I don't have to email him. I can come up here and ask him. He actually does have an open door policy. You can call him up and say, hey, I need a meeting. He says, okay. But I'm going to tell you something. That being said, too, I hope every one of y'all can look in the mirror. Every one of y'all. I'm not going to pick out two or three or four or five. I'm going to pick out all seven of y'all. Because I'm going to tell you something right here, right now. Y'all took a vote earlier on the charter, and yet I keep hearing that word tonight. I'm sorry, Ms. McCool, you didn't like the application, but you had the chance to fix that application in the very beginning, and you chose to sit quiet. Mr. Bryant, I get it. to the chair. That being said as well, maybe you need to take and redo that vote. Something you need to do, because you can change that vote tonight, can't you? One more thing before I shut up and sit down. Out of all the managers I've had to work with, how many of y'all can honestly say, now I know two of y'all only been here for a little while, but out of all the ones that we've had, how many of any of you can say that you can just walk into his door and talk to the man, sit down and talk to him? Not like you're talking to that wall over there, like we do when we stand here. Most of the time when we stand here, we're talking to that wall. No, y'all can actually go in and talk to that man. Now, the only problem I have with him, is he's got that little VT, to, you know, Virginia Tech, you know. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's okay. I can forgive him for being a Virginia Tech fan. If that's the only fault I got with him, that's saying a lot. Because every one of y'all know, I come up here every single Monday night. I haven't missed a meeting in almost five years, except for when y'all told me I couldn't because of the pandemic. How many of y'all can say that? I see we got somebody in the bed, but at least she's trying to come in here. I, I get that too. That's amazing that we got Zoom now and y'all can use it. I'm going to tell you now, if you let this man go, each and every one of y'all need to resign your positions. Tara DeRico, please. So I have to follow Elbert again. <laughs> All right. Tara DeRico, Deltona. Um, so most, most of my comments are to Mr. Peters, although I will direct a chair and face this way. 
So I would personally like to request that you reconsider on behalf of myself and clearly the majority of the people in this room, maybe except for one or two, um, but also on behalf of many of my fellow residents and community members that I've talked to. Flip, flip through my notes, sorry. Um, we've, we've had, you know, multiple people talk about how transparent and communicative Mr. Peters is, how much he cares about the city and the community, and several of you sitting up there have also said the same thing. So I would respectfully request that we look for a way, and thank you, Mr. King, for giving us that suggestion and that way to retain Mr. Peters and his expertise in managing our city. Um, and Mr. Peters, I do want to say, because you, you showed a lot of vulnerability here tonight, and I want to thank you and say, stay true to yourself, sir. Um, you stay a man of principle and a man of integrity, because not only does that make you a good man, but that makes you exactly what this city needs. So thank sure. you, sir. Richard Bellick, please. Mr. King, the guy he was talking about before was Judas. Uh, I had no problem with Mr. Peters. He's a good guy. Treated me fair, and uh, that's more than I got from anybody up there. And uh, I just want to say, say one thing. Uh, before, when I talked about that lawsuit with the Holmes, the first time I was told this, I distinctly remember, it was the developer, okay? So tonight, now, it came in that it's a two-party suit. That didn't happen the last time. If it would have been a two-party suit brought up last time, I wouldn't have said what I said. Now, as far as John Peters goes, he says he has three options. I'm going to give him one. If you quit, John, me and Elbert are going to be waiting for you outside. We'll see how far you get. Good luck. <laughs> Kathy Bryan, please. <laughs> Time for a break, Mayor. Break. I'm going to get everybody and Mr. Speak to the chair, Mr. Bellick shirt tonight, I think. Um, so I forgot about half of what I was going to say <laughs> up here, other than I was really excited when Mr. Peters got this job, yeah. and I, his energy and his uh, getting stuff done, I was like, wow, we're actually seeing stuff get done. This is great. Um, and, and I understand when you're elected to a position such as this, you, you know, a lot of, there's been always a lot of contentions in these meetings where nobody ever does what the residents say. And so I give people kudos for backing the residents, but there are certain things that you, you, you don't do, you don't put out there. If I, if I in my 30, over 30 years working in the medical field, put stuff out about my hospital, whether it was true or not, without any kind of fact, necessarily factual basis, without having anything but hearsay, guess how long I would have been working it there? I wouldn't have. So while you, and I know sometimes you guys here, I have the, you know, you can, you certainly can go do that. You have the right, the, the Constitution, blah, blah, blah. You also have the right not to sit up there. You follow, you follow the principles or you, you don't sit up there. Definitely back your residence and stuff like that, but uh, this guy has loads of years of experience in municipalities. And he's, he's, I think he's proven and shown that he has. And obviously, guys, some of you guys have, have come to see that and respect that. And um, I think it's a big loss to the entire city. Man has plans. I've listened to some of his plans, and I'm thinking, yes, that's a great idea. Let's go. So that's that's what I got to say. Thanks. Thank you. Manny Rodriguez, please. Mr. 
Mr. Manny Rodriguez, District 4. It's like a circus tonight. And the problem was created by the commission, not by Mr. Peters. All of you are at fault. I want all the five of you, the one on the television, I don't know if you can see or not, look behind me, what's behind me? is representative of your bosses, or one boss, which is the city of Deltona. All of you up there have one employee, only one, Mr. Peters. You failed Mr. Peter. You failed to give him the tools that he needed to do his job. And then you circumvented the process by asking him for him to do favors for you. That's what you did. So you don't have to look, you look at yourself in a mirror. Next time I come here, I'm gonna bring mirrors and give them to you so you can look at yourself every night. So it's, you can see what you're looking at or what we look at. So don't blame Mr. Peters. Now, Mr. Peters made a decision to leave. And you have asked him, begging him to stay. If he stays, how is he gonna face his people? Shame on his face. They won't trust him, they won't believe in him. True. And then you will be holding to him because he's gonna turn around later on and say to you, if you don't do what I want, I'm going to resign. So honor his request. Thank you. Elizabeth Chaz and then David Santiago, and then Brandy White. As Chavez, for the record, Deltona. Um, I just wanna say um, that in the Bible it also says that when you say yes, that your yes be a yes, and that when your no is a no, that your no be a no. I don't have trust in what I see sometimes in my local government. It is sad, cause I'm, I'm young, you know, and I, I wanna see the city uh, flourish and have all these programs for the kids and the teens, which we don't have. Um, and then I wanna see nice places that I could go to with my children while I'm bringing my son up. And I've been here since 1994 and I graduated from Deltona High. And I left and I came back because I like Deltona. <clears throat> and it is a sad night, what I see here tonight. It's great that some revelations have been given and I wanna say myself, I didn't trust in Mr. Peters or his position or what he could bring to the table. I'm gonna be honest with you because he's looking for something temporary. This is not long term for him. He knows that, that's why he went into it. That's why he's falling back on his public works position. Let him go. He wants to go. Very clearly he says he cannot work any longer with because he does not trust. And that's, that's already broken. And in a relationship, regular relationships, our trust is broken. It takes a long time, not six months. I think that we should honor the fact that he's being honest about that and not, not drag it out. <clears throat> because when he comes back to work, after whatever you say, because you're going against what he wants, really, when you want to put in a motion, He's not gonna do it with the same oomph. He's not gonna do it with the same emphasis that he would have done. And I still believe that each one of you do your jobs as best as you can. I, I've been coming here to some of the meetings. I have a four-year-old, he's pretty rambunctious. I have to attend to him. But what I do see is I don't see what's behind the doors, what you guys have to sign, what you guys have to decide on other than these things that I see here. And I wanna thank commissioners like Dana McCool and David Sosa for um, representing the people. I need a breath for answering emails. Mr. Peters answering emails. See, that's, that's good. 
and maybe this is just the crack in the egg that's needed. Charters being made over, you know, whatever ordinances being reviewed. I think all that is good, and it didn't come about until new leadership came into play. So, in the meantime, I only am giving a suggestion from what I'm hearing on the outside. I'm nobody. But if he wants to go, let him go, and start today looking for a city manager, not in three months, not in six months, <clears throat> and then make sure that everything's clear in that charter so that you guys can come. And when you come to do these budget things, you're not just doing them and saying, oh, give him $15,000, because look what's happening now. Oh, just give him $15,000, $25,000, just give it to him, because he looks like a good man. What if he doesn't want the job? David Santiago, please. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. You know, I really don't try to do this out of respect for on, on many levels, but I feel compelled today. I know every single one of you. Uh, I've been here I've, since the beginning of the city, served on that side, taking the heat on both sides. And I know that every single one of you, the conversations that I've had privately, uh, cares for the city and has ideas on how to improve it in your own ways and your own strategies. And, and many of you, we've had very deep conversations and in some cases asked for advice and we've bounced ideas back and forth. So I believe everyone here, you here up there and on TV are here for the right reasons. I've also had the privilege and the opportunity to work with every single city manager that's represented this city, whether it be an interim or permanent position on an official capacity as a commissioner, as an official capacity as a state representative, and even as a resident. And I could tell you there's two top ones that I have worked with in all those capacities. I remember Fritz Baring. Some of those might remember Fritz Baring from back in the days. And this man standing right there. Yeah. The two best ones that I've seen work hard for this city. Um, I'm not here to convince Mr. Peters to make his decision. He and I have had a private conversation about that, but I just wanted to air that publicly. Some of the ideas that have come from this man have amazed me, and I said if we can do half of or a quarter of some of those ideas, this city would be a showcase for others around us. Um, I, I'll, 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 I'll be remiss to say that from the outside watching in, and I'm not blaming anyone uh, uh, in particular, but I also, I've seen a lot of blame thrown on you all there, but I also believe there's blame behind me. And what I've seen from the outside in, I've talked to folks that have all been longtime participants, citizens that have come here and just watch our government practice. Sometimes great debate has come from here, whether it's been in the opposition and in the, or in favor of something, but in my opinion, the political theater that has been ongoing here for the last few years has been part of the cause, not the only cause, but part of the cause of what's caused uh, the, the distaste uh, for people participating in this process. And I don't say that to make us look bad, but I wanna say that since people are airing what they're saying, I think it's a good opportunity to discuss this and, um, and hopefully, Whatever decision is made for Mr. Peters, I respect it. I look forward to hopefully working with him more, but I respect his decision, whatever capacity he makes. And, and, and if he goes to public works, I'd like to work with him there and help there. Um, but um, there's blame probably in the front and in the back. And I just hope that uh, a comment was made by Mr. Peters that we need to recognize is don't let the agitators dictate the policy of 90,000 or 90,000 plus people in this city. Thank you. Thank you. Randy White, please. For Randy White, Deltona. I didn't actually plan on addressing it tonight, but I was a little surprised at how many times I heard the word trust and accountability tonight. Uh, not just from Mr. Peters, but up from the commission, something that I've spent five years of my life begging for was to restore the trust, communication, transparency, accountability. And I find it very odd, almost like a twilight zone as I'm sitting there, I'm like, where was this three years ago? 
when our city was falling apart and when we really needed to step in before it got to here. Because I'm gonna tell you what, and I respect the fact that you're saying it's you know some issues with current commissioners, but it goes way back. Me and Mr. Peters had a conversation. I'll paraphrase because I'm respectful. He's putting out fires from long before this commission. Long before this commission. He's putting out fires that many of you who were here failed to put out, failed to address, failed to uh, fix, failed to have a responsibility or accountability. So as you're pointing fingers at maybe one or two, I hope you realize that four are pointing right back at you. Because not one of you up there are innocent and in where he is today. The other thing I'm a little <laughs> surprised about was uh, the comment from Mike Williams about having to air all this out and we shouldn't hide it or anything. He brought a damn shovel here to bury the stuff that our other city manager was doing. So I'm really surprised to hear that we should be doing this, but I'm glad, I'm happy, it's great. I've only been dedicating five years of my life trying to get that to occur. You know my stance on you, sir. I have backed you since the day I researched you and you wanted to be a public utility director. I was not the popular vote then. I wasn't the popular vote when I backed him to become the city manager. But I did my research. I knew what we were gonna get. Something this city sorely, sorely needed. And that is somebody who will have a backbone, who will speak up, who will instill trust with the residents, who has open communication, and is clearly has no problem bringing accountability. But I don't blame you for going either. I wish you would stay, you know that, but I don't blame them for going. But it's really hard for me to sit over here and hear what y'all have to say now when it should have been said three years ago and he wouldn't be trying to put out the fires he's been putting out. So again, all due respect to you, you know I back you 100%, but if you're ready to go, I don't blame you. That closes public comments. Okay, that closes our public comment and before uh, we move this any further, uh, we need to extend this meeting. So it is 10.20. Do we, uh, commissioners, have uh, an inkling? I, looking at the rest of the agenda, I don't know that we're going to get done before 11. Are we okay with extending that? Do you want to make a motion, sir? Yeah. Is 11:15 good? Whatever you want. I make a motion to extend our meeting to 11:15. Who's that? Did you second? Properly moved by Commissioner Ramos to extend the meeting to 11:15. Seconded by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we have till 11.15. So now we've come to the point of Mr. Peters, are you ready to speak or would you like to take five minutes? Can Mr. King tell me what his motion was again? <laughs> Mr. King or Joyce, Mr. King, your motion. Would you like to read it again? You want me to read it or do you want to read it? You want me to read it? <laughs> I move to table this discussion in regards to the resignation of the interim city manager until the first meeting in January 2022 to allow ample time for him to reconsider his request for resignation and to allow commission members sufficient time to more clearly understand their authority and their duties, the authority and duties of the interim city manager, and in good faith show their, wit, uh, show their wit, willful, willingness to work together to move the city of Deltona forward. Um, I'm fine with the motion to change interim to acting. That is actually my title. Acting. Uh, because interim city manager would not apply to me. So noted. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We've gone through public comment and commission comment. Mr. Peters, you're okay with the motion and the second on the floor? Let's move forward with the vote, please. That is an affirmative. Commissioner Villa Vasquez? Yes. 
Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Hersberg? Yes. Matt, motion passes seven to zero. <laughs> Mr. Peters, um, I would ask that in the reflection upon this item, that should, should you come into this situation again where you feel that you have one or multiple commissioners pressing you on an issue to go down a rabbit hole that takes an extreme amount of your time, I would respectfully request that you bring those issues forward and let the body, the body of the commission weigh in on that. Whether, whether it's hiring an attorney for an ADA situation for an individual who didn't want to comply with a zoning issue to investigation of public records requests to hiring code consultants. You brought Mr. O'Grady. I'm just saying multiple things over time that have come up that have taken amounts of time the commission needs and we did on the code issue, on the code process. That's one process that we've had to go through is to revamp and look at our code and animal control process. ADA is another, public records are another. But when it becomes a situation where the work is being done for one case only or another case only and it takes that much time to continually go after one situation when there is no possible way to make that situation end well for those people requesting that, it needs to come to the commission to put an end to it. Five huge boxes full of public records requests on one issue that is a zoning issue, should never, never, never have that emotional, mental, physical, and financial toll on an acting city manager ever again. So I re respectfully ask that when these issues come up, please, if you feel you are spending way too much time putting out a fire, bring it to the body for discussion and a vote to either move forward or end it. Because it can't go on like this. Madam. Yes, sir. Madam Mayor, for purposes, I guess, of just putting on the record, and I don't think we need a motion, but I think uh, maybe that question should have consent from this die so that there is no gray area about what you just said. Well, and I, you and I also that? think that Mr. Peters needs to, to, to weigh in on that because that is something that he needs to, to feel comfortable with. Because we all know how, how some of these issues have taken a toll on you. Because you are trying to find a solution and sometimes the solution is there's not an adequate solution to please people. And I don't know how you feel about that, but that is, I know, at the core of some of these, some of, some of the problem here. There has to be an end game somewhere. It has to end. Uh, Madam Mayor, um, I think following the intent of the uh, motion that Commissioner King made, um, I think it's important that we revisit our uh, commission policies and procedures um, to address things such as what you're talking about where we just have, you know, like I referred to earlier, the ant in the jar. Um, when I've got too much <laughs> agitation going on with the jar, I need to let you know. Um, and, you know, it may be certain people. Um, it may be certain commissioners. Uh, but I think what we need to do is find a process uh, where we openly discuss 
when somebody's agitating the jar. Um, and I think that will help us uh, because we can work together. We've shown it. Uh, we've had incredible strategic planning process where you all worked as a colloquial body, came to agreements. Um, you know, unfortunately, there weren't a whole lot of people in the room, um, and there have been some suggestions that that's why things went so well. Um, no offense to the audience. Um, but um, I think we need to identify when somebody is agitating the jar and find a solution rather than letting it fester. Uh, so um, part of my commitment to the commission is over the next six months, we will look at ways that we can work better um, as a team. Um, you know, I, I just want to say one thing, all the, the nice things that were said about me this evening, um, you know, in large part it is your staff. Um, I know Ms. McCool sometimes thinks that when I have a lot of papers on my desk that I'm taking on too much. Uh, but, you know, my staff takes on a lot of it. Um, there's a couple of them over there uh, that I have a great deal of respect for. Um, and, you know, I think we're building a very good team here that we can do some really outstanding things. Um, we just need to get through a process of how we handle uh, issues and things before they turn into a, a problem. Much like Brandy White said, uh, we spend a lot of time on the past. And, you know, there comes a point we got to turn the corner and, and head to the future. And uh, so I'm, I'm willing to work with you all in that process. Um, you know, we'll see what the future holds after January, but uh, in the meantime, let's see what we can do. Roll us up our sleeves and uh, see what we can do to make the city better. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the public forum now. <coughs> Marta Chamoria, Robert Trombada, Mike Williams, Kathy Bryan, Marvin Hemeyer, Albert Bryant, Richard Bellick. Marta Chamboris, please. Marta. Robert Trombetta, please. Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Trimbetta. I'm uh, from uh, 439 Golden Arm Ro uh, Road in Deltona. Uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I came up here today was because uh, I haven't been coming to meetings, but I do kind of go through the meetings on the on the video when I when I can. And one of the things that really upsets me is the demeanor of the people in this in this in the crowd. I don't agree with some of our commissioners. I don't agree almost all the time. And some of the commissioners, I agree men's and men's half the time. And some of the commissioners I tend to agree a lot, a lot with. But one thing that I, I have to say is that you guys put yourselves out there. You guys went and hustled. I, my commissioner, Commissioner Sosa, uh, I saw you out there day and night campaigning. I, I mean, it just amazed me. Commissioner Vasquez, same thing. Just out there all the time campaigning. People here talk. Why don't you put yourselves up there? Up. Sir, address the chair, Excuse please. Me. People up th back there, why don't they put themselves up and to a vote of the people. Why don't they, instead of opening their mouth, how dare anybody, how dare anybody accuse people without proof of taping, taking bribes? How dare you? 
If, the, if you weren't city commissioners, if you weren't public figures, your, your butt would be sued, and it should be. That's disgusting. Nobody on this commission, nobody on this commission, any of you commissioners, want bad for this city. You want different things. You have different priorities. But nobody should be pointing a finger and say, you want to do something wrong for the city. You are something malignant for the city. We all have agreements and disagreements. So shame on some of these people back here who open their mouth all the time, but never had the guts or the stones to put their name on the line and move up over here. The uh, other thing I want to talk about was I didn't hear apologies to the, to the sheriff's department. I heard one apology. And I think other people should have apologized. I'm not a person who, if you know me, I'm not a person who believes any group is perfect. Policemen, clergy, any group. And when they do something wrong, they should be called out. But shame on anybody for calling, calling a policeman out before any facts, were, not even a little video, was out there. That, that's terrible. And that's either naivete in some people being new, or just poor judgment. The final thing I want to talk about is our political sign issue. I drive by a house that has a political sign that has the F word in it. You people on the board, commissioners, these people on the commissioners, who support that, that belief or that candidate that that person believes should go to him and say, do us a favor and take that sign down because you're embarrassing your party. All I know is that Hillsborough ha County has limits on the amount of time si political signs can be up and this city should have it too. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Williams, please. Somebody leave their phone up here. Someone leave their phone. Okay. Hey. Good, Robert. Good man. All right. Uh, again, Mike Williams, 2889 Cottiesville Street. Um, just a couple of comments tonight. Well, first of all, um, we've gotten some bad press in the paper lately, the last week or so. I'm hoping we have a communications department that can somehow address the newspaper and get some of that turned around. I've talked to Pat Rice, who's the editor of the Daytona Beach News Journal, and I've said to Pat on more than one occasion, I said, Pat, why do you all always try to bury us over here in Deltona? He said, well, Mike, you know the real reason is people only want to read about negativism and sensationalism. They don't want to hear that you took a little old lady to the grocery store, helped her with her groceries, brought them home, and put them on the shelf for her. They want to hear that you hit her in the head, snatched her pocketbook, and threw her off in the bushes. They, they don't want to hear the good stuff. So if anybody has any influence with the news journal in particular to get some good press about the city of Deltona, let's get our communications department working at high speed and top speed right now to make that happen. We saw what happened with um, the interim mayor, the acting mayor, um, com, um, city manager, uh, Cooper. Obviously, you guys have seen that suit that he's filed against the city or has an attorney filing. Don't know how that's going to turn out. Bad press. Doesn't give us good press here with the city. Talk to a friend of mine who many of you know up here, been a friend for a long time, Michael Plaus, who's the city manager for the city of Deland, our neighboring city. I asked Mike, I said, Mike, and I said this jokingly to him, that's when we were searching for a city manager some time back. I said, why don't you run yourself off on a life-size copy of a computer, of a copier, and make a copy and run for mayor, uh, not mayor, run for city manager for the city, not run, put yourself out for that position. He said, Mike, I wouldn't touch that position in Deltona, and we've heard it tonight with a 10-foot pole or even a 100-foot pole. I said, why? He said, because the dais wants to run the city of Deltona. 
We've heard that enough tonight from everybody. Let that be the lesson for us. You hire a city manager, you work with the city manager, you let the city manager do what they or he or she needs to do. Guys, I've been in management at a high level. I handle half of the country for one company, all the states west of the Mississippi River with eight region managers, 26 states. So we know what it means to give people their head, as we say in the business world, and let them run with it. If you got an issue that needs to be addressed, then do that. Not all things are gonna always agree with what you agree with. Good and smart people find a way to work through things and work them out, and not become vindictive if something doesn't work that falls into your camp or doesn't land on your runway. So the city of Deltona, still proud of my city, didn't realize my shovel was so remembered by so many people when I came in here that night, jokingly with the shovel to bury some things and move on, but be that as it may. Again, um, Mr. Peters, all the best to you, um, but it's gonna take some hand-holding and everybody throwing their arms around them and saying, hey, we're gonna move this city forward, but we're gonna let the people do what they need to do to run the position. Now, the challenge you've got, I understand we don't have an acting city manager right now. Or, I mean, I'm, we don't have an assistant, whatever, whatever falls below you, because I was hearing, um, I was hearing uh, Commissioner uh, McCool say that the workload seems to be so great, okay? She, you guys are up close and personal with it, I don't know, because uh, I'm busy running my own business. But if the workload is so great, any good manager knows that he or she needs to do what? Delegate. Find good people. People always say to me, Mike Williams, you know how to do a lot of stuff. I know a lot of people, I tell people all the time, I really do not know how to do anything, Joyce. Rafferty, even fill out a form, George will tell you about that. But what I do know is I know how to find people that know how to do stuff. I give them their head, I get out of the way, right, Commissioner Vasquez, and I let them do it. That's been the secret of my success all my life. Thank you, and Deltona, let's stay on the move. Kathy Bryan, please. Albert Bryan, Deltona. You know, I came here tonight thinking that the sheriff was going to stand here and give me some stats of what actually crime oh. happened tonight. I didn't see, but you know, one, two stats that actually came out of his mouth. Other than that, what I heard from him, what I've heard from him for the last two weeks. And something a sheriff, you know, as far as I'm concerned, really shouldn't be doing. Because as a sheriff, he should be de-escalating. Not throwing gas on a gas fire. Now I have all the respect for all the deputies and all the staff that's under him. But you know, the man really lost my respect the last two weeks. It's funny, because what really made me mad in the original part, when he said the citizens that come up here and speak are trolls. That really irritated me, because as you know, I speak a lot. But tonight, he came up here on the guise of saying that he was going to talk actually about stats. Where were those stats? Why did none of y'all ask for those stats? I I'm just amazed. So in other words, let's see here. What did he say? He said that y'all were a bunch of spineless commissioners. So by him lying to us, does that make him a spineless sheriff? I have to wonder about this because he came here for one reason. One reason, one reason only. To fill this room up with sheriff people, which I you know, don't have a problem with, unless he's doing it for intimidation. What it really reminded me of was a picture that I saw as a young man of an Indian village and the cavalry all around him. When the cavalry was done, there was no women, no men, no children, no nothing left of those Indians. That's what that reminded me of tonight. I was disgusted. Not of the men standing back there, 
but the man standing here. That being said, I'm going to move on. What was done tonight with the charter review? I'm sorry. It'll change now to another process. You had your chance. I warned you. I gave you every warning what I would do if you chose to not do this. You think September's just around the corner? No, trust me. We won't let you all worry about it anymore at all. I'm going to put it before them now. I warned you what I would do. You chose to go against it, so be it. We will put it in front of the people and eliminate you people. It's real simple. You won't have a choice now. What I get science signatures for, it will go forward. Trust me, I will push it and I will push it because your charter is very badly written. Mm -hmm. So you want to fight? Good, I'll give it to you. Kathy Bryan, please. Okay, y'all can take your plugs out now. Um, first of all, the Friends of the Deltona Library are having a plant sale on June 12th. It is, I think, 1984 West Chapel Drive from nine to noon, rain or shine. Plants are usually three to five dollars, and um, a lot of them are like native plants that um, do really well in the yard. I've gotten some there before because I keep trying to fill in and get rid of more grass and just have more stuff that I don't have to take care of because if I have to take care of it, he can tell you it turns brown. Um, so anyways, I just want to get that out. If you guys like plants, go get some. They're, they're good prices and um, a lot of them are donated and dug up by people who live around here. So. There's that. Um, about half the stuff I remember, I remembered that I wanted to say up here earlier was, um, I, I, I'm sorry that you guys have delayed the, the charter review. I, I feel like the sooner we can get started on that, even though it will be a while before we can actually put it into practice, the more time we have to get that going is going to be beneficial. And I agree with Mr. Ramos. You had. 10 people who were interested, you know, if it, it, open it up, but I, you know, it, it's September. Every time, you know, something we keep pushing it off and pushing it off, and then we have more problems that arise because our charter is weak. So do we keep ripping off the, out the stitches before the bleeding stops? The next thing is, we had, we had the whole conversation about the metal detector earlier, and I said, make sure you put some instructions out there, what's gonna happen, what the process is for that, so that everybody's very clear about that. And I'm, I'm always watching, and I heard the conversation that night with, um, when Ms. Stuck came up and, and, and told what happened. And <laughs> while I, I kind of fussed at you guys earlier um, for, for knee-jerk reactions. My mom always said, two wrongs don't make a right. And she's, she's correct. So I, I, there was behavior here. There was, and, and, and all the deputies in the room, I, they're great. I don't blame them. But I feel like our sheriff reverted to a two-year-old child. So. That reaction and this reaction has just made it all, and I, I don't know what we need to do I, I, to, to, to settle that, but I, I'm, you, you, these, these are the people running my city and, and, and taking care of my county. And, I, I, <laughs> and then we have name calling and we have this, that, and the other, and, and, and I, I, you know, again, I, I gotta stress that, you know, take a deep breath, think about it. 
And then lastly, I'm going to compliment somebody because, you know, I, I, like I said, I've been watching these for a long time, and I never saw him speak. I was like, the man never says a word, but lately, Mr. Ramos has been quite vociferous <laughs> over the past years, but he's usually somewhere in there a little voice of reason. I don't always agree, but I appreciate that. I'm glad he's, he's it seems like he's participating. You may have been before, and I just didn't see it, but I appreciate it. Um, that's it. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Richard Bellick. Alvin Mortimer. Good evening, Commission. Um, first of all, can you pull your mic up? Thank you. Um, thank you to all of our first responders, uh, EMTs, police, everything. Um, uh, what I want to talk about is not going to be received well, but it's something that we need to look at, okay? Something was said in the commission earlier today, this evening. Sorry to throw you out there, Commissioner, but by David Sosa about the sheriff making accusations on the radio. It must be nice to be able to sit up there and have a microphone to bitch back and complain when somebody makes false accusations about you. Because the sheriff has about me, and I welcome anybody from the media, anybody, anytime, come get my side. Because there's always two sides to a story. More than likely, there's three. There's your side, my side, and the truth. Now, you guys got wrongly accused. Pat Northy, she's running a gang. If you're listening, Pat, can I apply? Where do I turn the paperwork in? I mean, really, man, think about it. There is no oversight for the sheriff, okay? I have no problem with the deputies that work under him. There has got to be some type of oversight for issues like this. You guys got a microphone. Civilians don't. Brandy White, Christina March, Joy Cottrell, me, other people. Those are just the people you know. How many other people do you think were like me for years and years and years and couldn't get pushed in a corner? But a dog finally gets tired, man, and he bites you. He eventually bites you. you I wish our commission would strongly consider a citizen review board that you people decide who's on there. You probably don't want somebody like me although I know their, their policies pretty well. Um, we have issues in Deltona that aren't being discussed. You know, the Gregory Howell incident, I'm gonna throw it out there. Um, these are things we need to discuss. You can't just put things to the side and think they're gonna go away. Gregory Howell had a mother, he had a family. You know, I came here to, to, for CompStat. What happened? He didn't have four minutes. He had a filibuster to say everything he wanted to say, and nobody stopped him. We didn't have a chance to get in there and speak about it. How come all we hear about are the good things? How come we don't hear about the body found in Deltona? How come we don't hear updates I think it just came out tonight about Inda Barry. I mean, I know I'm talking about another city now and I'm ranting, but we really need to think about it, man, because you guys have power. You guys have, have a microphone to come and holler into. We don't have anything. All we've got, according to him, is a soapbox to yell from. I ain't started yelling yet. Thank you. Brandy White, please. Liz, well, how many more? Okay, thank you. I'm just running low on battery, and after this, I'm gonna 
take a five minute recess, so. Brandy White Deltona, uh, I just jotted down a lot of notes during this meeting, so I might just be a little bit jumbled everywhere. So I'm not where to start, but I guess from the beginning, as you've heard already, uh, the, the fake cop stop presentation. We need some accountability on that, Mr. Peters. Um, I wanna know how that happened. How a presentation went into a complete um, display, uh, uh, uh. display, um, addressing multiple issues outside of CompStat and then public was not allowed to have any comment. And when a comment was made out loud to my wife, I was told I would be removed by the hundreds of deputies surrounding me as if it wasn't already nerve wracking enough to walk into this room as I bypassed a SWAT team member, okay? then you wanna make the threat to me to remove me because I said something out loud to my wife and you have failed to show the same to other people who have yelled out today. Just to me. Because I was questioning what he was telling you you should be doing. Trust and verify. Where was that trust and verify all along? It applies to you but not them? but you wanna to threaten to remove me when you re refuse to give the public the comment time to speak. That was not ComStat he was speaking about. So Mr. Peters, I wanna know how did this happen? How did he get unlimited time and ability to have dialogue, which we scream for, all under the disguise of a ComStat presentation? That's question number one. And y'all might wanna get a pen because talking about questions. I want the same respect that I've seen tonight given to other people, where their questions are actually answered. I have over 50 outstanding questions, not only made by email, but at this podium. Three more tonight, by the way. I didn't get answers to three of my questions tonight. I'll go through them again in case you need to write that down. I wanted to know exactly what our city attorney does, literally exactly what he does. I wanna know if in fact we were misadvised by legal counsel, what happens next? And I wanted to know who was attacked because that was said to have occurred. Now, if I can maybe get those within the next month, it would be appreciated. But I would really like you to also go back and listen to the 50, 60 times I've come here and asked questions and still haven't received a single response on. But funny, Mike Williams asked one, you made sure he got his answer right away. No bias here. These are not a PRR, by the way, so don't even come at me with that crap. I'm asking a question, I don't need a document. Many of my requests come back with, you need to PRR, absolutely not, it's a question. I deserve an answer. With that said, I'd like to ask again one more question that although I received an email response, it didn't apply. How did VCS go give video footage that I was denied for the same reason? To clear your name, and I'm Thank out of Thank you, Elizabeth Chavez, please. Chavez Delta, um, yeah, with the, Actually, just piggyback on that, one of my questions is, if there was an attack, there should have been a police report, um, and that would be public knowledge. Um, so where is that public knowledge of that police report of that attack? That's very important, because then I can understand more. So the need to continue to have the, uh, you know, the metal detector, by the way, when I went through the metal detector, which I, I have no problems, with that at all, um, it, we just want to build trust, and so the, I think that's the consensus of that with, when it comes to a metal detector, but before I came through the door, I was advised to be careful because um, there was hardly no, no room 
it's great to see deputies backing up what they do. I have no issues with that, but it's kind of sad how there's no stats on uh, drugs with children and youth. I would like to see a survey done on that because that does exist in Deltona, Mayor. Um, homelessness also does exist in Deltona. It's in the woods of Deltona in our parks. Um, and I, the gentleman left, but if you guys want to suggest any good news to the gentleman for whatever paper he was saying that could bring some light to Deltona, there's a lot of nonprofits out here doing a lot of stuff for a lot of people. Really good things. Bringing a semi truck with over 30,000 pounds of food to feed people that right now still need it, that's good news. It's not bad news. It doesn't bring a bad light to Deltona. It just, it's saying that we're doing something of compassion during a time of pandemic. There's other, other, other groups that are nonprofits that are doing things. There's one called the Lion's Den. It's at 689 Deltona Boulevard, and it's every Saturday. And every second Saturday, there is a very stand-up Class A Act commissioner that goes and teaches martial arts to those kids for free, okay? That's a good light to Deltona, and he's a commissioner. Tell them about that, and they should go over there and do that. You see what I'm saying? These are the good things about Deltona, but then I have to tell you, there is drugs, there is crime. He didn't give maybe some stats, I came a little bit late, but if you look at some of the surveys that they've given out <clears throat> about the areas they'll show red, orange, they're talking about crime. And the most that I see is in the ages of even 12 to 20s, and it's car theft. That's in Deltona. So maybe some of these things have to do with our youth not having an outlet. Another thing is that I, you know, I do feel that if you're gonna put something to us, the residents, like we can't curse, that maybe the commission shouldn't curse either. That uh, if you do feel that somebody's rights are being violated, that maybe check a little bit better on that next time too, and the process that you take to doing that, which is wonderful. Then I'm gonna ask, maybe this gentleman can bring a forum or you guys have an outlet to talk to someone as well. Because if you have so much load and so much stress, then you guys need somewhere else to go to. Yes, I'm talking like a counselor or a therapist or somebody that can give you guys relief where you can go and talk to. If you need help, I, I have secretarial um, you know, experience. I have my own nonprofit. If you want to take me to oath on anything, I'll help you and for free, I'll volunteer. May that close the public comments. Okay, that closes the public comment and I'm going to take a five minute recess. Um, someone please time that. And I have almost no juice left. I don't know where our uh, plugins are.
Oh, whenever everyone's up here, and we are going to Vice Mayor. You good? You good? Unmute. Are you mute. Unmute. I'm sorry. They're working on the video. Okay, you're okay. Okay, we are going to. I can hear move you on. guys. Is everyone up here? Liz, do we have any comments on consent agenda? Marvin Haymeyer, please. Hello, Marvin Haymeyer, I've been in Delta since 1989. Um, I'm gonna break up the tension a little bit and kind of start off with something different. I came across a bit of information that we were actually gonna be having a carnival here in Deltona for the first time. Is that so? So, um, if so, I just had a couple questions on that because I hadn't seen any information put out for food vending uh, as of yet. I do see it for non-food vending on the website, but seeming that we have about a month, so that happens. Small businesses need to get their staffing together. This is gonna be an extended event. So just need to find out about that. Hours, parking accommodations. How many are you projecting? What's the, I guess, limitations for how many people we can get in Dewey? You know, uh, point of contact, who's handling all of this? It's a bit lost. It's a big event for a very short amount of time that's uh, coming up, so. Thank you, sir. We'll sure. go ahead and pull that item from consent and then have uh, Mr. Reckley address those sure. questions. And you can also feel free to talk to our Park and Rec Director, Mr. Reckley. Okay, okay. sounds great, thank you. Anything else, any others? Okay, that closes the public comment portion for consent agenda. So on tonight's consent agenda, we have item 11A, request for approval of resolution number 2021-25 to appropriate a $6,000 donation re received from Advent Health and budget $6,000 to pay for youth basketball jerseys. Item B, this is the one um, we're gonna pull, item B for quick discussion to address the concerns. So item C, request approval to award ITB number PW 2021-03 Deluxe Solar Inc in the amount of $824,035 for the construction of the Deltona Embedded Crosswalk Lighting Project rebid. Item D, request for approval of the Municipal Utility Installation and Reimbursement Agreement with Doyle Road Land Investments, LLC, Cortland Park Subdivision for the Force Main upsize on Doyle Road in connection with the Cortland Park Subdivision. And item E, request for support for the county $129,365 expenditure for the fiscal year 2021 Florida Department Law of Law Enforcement Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grants at JAG Grant. So what we would need is a motion for items A, items A, C, D, E, and we'll pull B. Is there a motion? Second. Properly moved by Commissioner King, seconded by Commissioner Ramos, and may we vote please on all items except B. Commissioner Villavasquez. Yes. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner McCool. Yes. Commissioner Ramos. Yes. Commissioner Sosa. Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford. Yes. Mayor Herzberg. Yes. Item B, Mr. Reckley, the 4th of July celebration. Yes, good evening, Commission. Ryan Reckley, Parks and Recreation. Um, thank you for the opportunity uh, for pulling that item. I did want to have some discussion on it. Um, maybe the reason that uh, a lot of the information hadn't gone out about food trucks or the carnival, uh, we wanted to make sure we had solidified uh, somewhat of a contract in writing before we present it. We wanted to do it last month, but it was some uncertainty in the contract. Uh, so it should have been a month earlier, uh, but everything is all set why some of the information may have been leaked out to some of the food truck vendors. Staff for about two and a half months have been going out through all the uh, meeting with all the food truck vendors that they've run, to, run through or uh, made contact with throughout uh, the city of Deltona and surrounding areas just to get somewhat of a commitment for them to come, for them to come in for this event. Um, and basically for the event, it's our 4th of July event. Uh, we decided we want to do something uh, bigger and better, um, give the city something to celebrate uh, after over a year and a half of 
kind of being inside with COVID, not really celebrating anything. Uh, we wanted to, to actually have a, a nice bang for our bang for 4th of July. Uh, so I know I've been speaking, you know, for probably about a year about doing some different food truck events. Um, so we decided to do that for 4th of July. Uh, Typically, 4th of July may have 10,000 people come and show up in attendance. Hopefully, with the, the idea of having a carnival actually come in, we may get more. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to people wanting to get out and celebrate actually something positive um, on Independence Day. Um, but any food truck vendors, if there's additional that want to come in, they're more than welcome to come on in. Uh, we're not going to uh, have any limitations, um, even if there's some duplicate on, on their menus. Uh, we've been accepting all, all kinds because uh, we think this is going to be a, a big event and we think we have a lot of people in the Deltona to service. Um, I think our food truck vendors will be able to, um, you know, generate some revenue themselves. Um, and also with us bringing in this carnival, um, as the, the backup states, this is opportunity for Deltona to actually receive some revenue, you know, for an event we usually just expend for. Uh, so we think it's a great opportunity both ways, and we actually look forward to doing um, additional programs and events like this in the future. Uh, so, Commissioner, you have any questions? Okay, thank you, sir. Commissioners, uh, let's see who's here. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So if I understand correctly, the carnival is gonna take, oh, take place instead of fire, so we're not gonna have fireworks on 4th of July. We're doing our typical 4th of July. Uh, all of the events that we normally have uh, for 4th of July, the added benefit is going to be a carnival attached to it. Okay. Now for our, our firework presentation, you know, we may shut down a carnival for that time because that's gonna be the main event um, at that time. The, the carnival is gonna take place from uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth, that Monday, um, since it is the recognized holiday. So we'll go on for four days, um, but with the fifth, uh, uh, July 4th, being the 4th of July with the fireworks, we're still gonna have a uh, typical 4th of July. Um, we, we're actually gonna extend that, that day a little bit longer uh, to give maybe the kids some activities during the day, because uh, we typically forget about them, but we're gonna have our typical 4th of July. We're just adding the carnival to it. Good, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that that was understood by everyone. We're still having our fireworks display. Okay. And it will be on the 4th of July. It will be the 4th of July. Okay. I know some cities have already designated July 3rd as the day they're gonna do their celebration, so I think that's a win-win for us. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, we need a motion to approve uh, I item. so move. Is there second. a second? Make Properly moved by Commissioner Ramos, who seconded it? Seconded by Commissioner Vasquez. Uh, yes. No, no, he's the, we're done with public comment. If he has anything he can speak to, can Mr. Talk. Reckley, public comment was before consent. May we vote, please? Commissioner Vasquez? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Herzberg? Yes. So instead of going forward now on to um, commission special reports and requests, we have had a uh, discussion and a request to bring back item 8C for the charter review and um, to, re, to readdress that situation to see if there's any uh, movement to go ahead and do this this evening and choose from these 10 people. You made the motion, Commissioner? You feel? Mayor, yes, the sir. motion to, to take it off the table would be moved to bring it off the table right. and consider it tonight if you wish. Right. Okay. And that needs to be done by someone who was on the winning side of the vote. Yes. Madam Mayor, uh, in light of our discussion, yep. post vote uh, with Mr. Peters, with uh, moving forward with other items of importance on the charter. I hereby make a motion uh, for us to vote this evening and turn our slips in to move the Charter Review Board Second. forward. Okay. Second. Motion. Second, okay. And let us go ahead and vote on that to go ahead and do this now. Commissioner Villavasquez? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Herzberg? Yes. 
So now we will go ahead, skip, we good? Okay, I need a new sheet. <laughs> I took notes on it. And wh while we're doing that. Madam Mayor, would yes. somebody ex just explain the process so we're all on the same page? Yes, exactly. So what you have in front of you is you have 10 applicants and you are going to rank each one of those applicants. You're gonna rank one, one, one num your first choice, number, another one your second choice, and if you can look at your um, your sheet, for example, if you want the first person listed to be your number one choice, you would put an X there. And if you wanted the last person to be your number four choice, you put and you you put an X there that they would be your number four choice. And everybody needs to sign it. Everyone needs to sign it. I'm going to sign mine first, and then hand it into Joyce while she tabulates. And Madam Mayor. Yes. The five with Madam the Mayor. least number. Five, five with the lowest, the five with Madam the lowest Mayor. score will be on the committee. Madam yes. Mayor, because you're choosing seven yes. all together, you really need to rank all 10. Yes. One yep. through 10, one being your first choice, 10 being your last. Okay. And then Joyce has a spreadsheet and she will determine the lowest scores uh, for everybody. So if all of y'all have somebody number one, that person would get a total of seven points. Uh, so what you're gonna do is, uh, uh, for all 10, you're gonna rank them one through 10 in your preference. That's, I'm talking about, uh, this is my wife's birthday party. Yeah, you're right, I forgot about that. No, but I'm back, I think I'm back like the 15th of December or something. So, uh, Jesus, I forget. <laughs> yeah. Uh, December. 18. Madam, Madam Mayor, what, where are we voting? Can I just say something? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I just want to say that I, I want to say thank you <laughs> for that conversation happening and bringing this back up because I think it's very vital as we continue to move forward. So, Commissioner Dana, thank you. Commissioner Vasquez, are you still on the board? Okay. Um, commissioners, while they're tabulating, it is pat, it is 11:20. We need to have to extend. <laughs> falling asleep. I know. Um, for another 20 minutes. <laughs> Look at your eyes. <laughs> No, we have special reports and requests and commission comments. All right. I say 1135. 11, okay. 1135. Is there a second for 1135? You? Aye. Okay. All in favor till 1135? Aye. Aye. Oh. <laughs> Okay, commissioners, we're gonna wait on the tabulations, but if you have anything on special reports and requests, put it on the board, because we're gonna go through this quickly, and then 
as soon as they're done, we'll move on to that. And we're also gonna need a motion and a second to accept these rankings. When it comes up. The Jeopardy music. Hey, can you want to roll that one down? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Roll it down. <clears throat> Skip. Can we go to special reports and requests while they're tabulating? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Sosa. <laughs> sorry, he's eating. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> take your time, sir, chew away. I hope it's not a Milky Way or Milk Dud thing. It'll take forever. <laughs> what is today? <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, just, just a couple things I'd like to address um, with tonight's meeting. And <clears throat> one of them, Mr. Peters. There's a sidebar, Commissioner Sosa. That's not good. <laughs> M Mr. Peters, what, one of the issues that came up if we, the commission has decided to retain the metal detector. Um, when I requested a policy and procedure for the metal detector from the city, we do not have one. Is that something we need to put in place to make sure no further issues happen? So I've already made a note from earlier tonight that we need to um, do that and also put a, a, a placard out there that explains the process so people when they come in understand how it will work. And um, so we will be working on that for, for the next meeting. Okay. And my, my second uh, comment has to do with Mike Williams. He, he had made a very interesting comment and I'd already had this in my notes. Um, do, do we have anybody on staff that does press releases for us? Or do we have anybody that, um, you know, for the positive things that we want to get out there? <clears throat> and um, do we have anybody, like a public relations official, that when commissioners are getting attacked on social media or in the news, since, you know, we're, we're going to tie our hands and we cannot respond back, do we have a public relations person that's going to take care of that for us, get our side of the story and respond back to negative uh, um, yes. comments out on social media and in the media? So. Okay, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Uh, yes, we do have someone that is um, our PIO. Uh, we are working on a process in which we can respond. However, it needs to be in the form of a policy that we bring back to the commission. I am not comfortable with uh, assigning someone that role without some guardrails. Um, so we will be developing some guidelines pretty quickly. I doubt it will be the next meeting, probably the first meeting in July. Um, but you know, we already, I've already, um, Rocco with the uh, Delta on the TV, 
Um, I've authorized him to reach out when people make inquiries as to when certain uh, videos are going to be available, and he will respond saying it will be ready at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning or whatever. Um, so we need to do similar things um, and designate certain people that will respond. For instance, uh, having somebody in Parks and Rec that will respond on you know, Parks and Rec items um, and what have you. So we need to develop that policy and bring it back to the commission. Okay. And, and how about when we have other elected officials attacking commissioners? Do we have somebody in a public relations department that can head this off before it gets to where it got today? Um, sir, I need to think on that one. Um, I, I appreciate some of your frustrations. Um, and, you know, one of the things we need to do is um, we need to revisit certain contracts. Um, we are working very closely with the Sheriff's Department on some really exciting things such as providing them an additional satellite location, um, a place for them to keep the bear cat so it stays in Deltona. Um, and Mr. O'Grady and I have talked about closer coordination between code enforcement and the Sheriff's Department. And I think as part of that ongoing discussion, there may be some opportunity to um, make some modifications with regard to grievances and what have you. But um, I don't want to go too far on that, but uh, we are looking at some things that I think could help improve that. Um, so I don't want to get too far into the weeds on that one. But okay. we will be looking at it. All right. Thank you. That ends our special reports and requests. And how are we doing, Joyce? Should we go to s commission comments? Or city attorney, any comments? No, ma'am. City Not manager, tonight. any comments? You good? Okay. City commission comments. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so, um, oops, sorry. I have a few answers to some of the questions that were addressed by residents. Um, so one of them was the comment that I made when I voted to keep um, our security up front. And I mentioned that staff, commissioners and whatever, and I mentioned the fact about staff that sits over there being attacked. You know, attack is not only, it's not a physical, there's no, it's not just a physical attack. There are verbal attacks that can be very intimidating. And maybe there are those that maybe are not afraid and just brush it off and keep walking, but we do have staff members that are, get intimidated and are afraid to walk out the door just by what they are told from that corner over there. So yes, we worry about our staff. So when I said attack, I wasn't referring to physical attack. I was referring to phys I was not referring to physical attack. I was referring to verbal. All right. So anyway, that's my explanation of why I made that comment. So the other um, answer, comment I want to make is that um, you know I do listen to the residents' comments, and sometimes. Um, when I think it's um, something that I need to sit down and address for Mr. Peters, I do. I, I sit down because um, I want to make sure that if it's something that we need to address and change, that I discuss with him and, and see, you know, what can be done on my side or his side to uh, comply with the residents' uh, questions. Um, and the other thing is, the way I do it is by follow procedures. I go to my uh, city manager, and then he will instruct me on how it's going to be done. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And I also just wanted to uh, thank, give a shout out to the staff who helped put the hurricane event together. 
We didn't have as good a turnout as we normally have. Uh, last year we didn't have it because of the pandemic. This year we started over again and we had about 10 to 13 attendees, but they were happy because they all walked out with a weather radio that was um, raffled out. Um, so I just wanna say thank you everyone and thank you for staying this late with us. Okay, great. Commissioner Sosa, did you have any commission comments? Okay. Commissioner Ramos, commission comments? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just real quickly, um, our Parks and Rec, we started our Youth Basketball League. Um, this Saturday, we had over 180 boys and girls participating. Um, flag football is starting um, next week, Saturday at West Crowell as well with their combine, and then they're gonna start their games. Um, and again, this is held on Saturdays over at West Crowell. I invite you guys to come by and see what's going on. And as well, just wanna remind folks, um, I know I think it was Commissioner Dana who had hers already, but um, Thursday, June 24th, at 7 p.m. again at West Crow, um, having the animal control um, wor um, workshop. Okay, Commissioner McCool. Yes, I would like to um, quickly say, if you haven't been out to the Deltona Community Gardens, you need to go. You need to go out there and look at the beautiful improvements that have been made. Go get involved, get a bed, go paint, go pick up, go, go. It's beautiful and I think that it's a great community thing and I just wanna say, go Dips. Commissioner King. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, first invite everybody to come out on uh, the 9th of June um, to Harris Saxon Center, uh, Community Center uh, over on California. We will be having our uh, animal control uh, town hall that evening at 7, 7 p.m. So um, please plan on coming out. I've already uh, emailed um, all of those folks who I have emails four in the first district. So you've probably already gotten that email, but anybody else that's interested, um, that'll be June 9th, 7 p.m. at Harris Saxon Community Center. <clears throat> also, I wanted to say thank you to uh, the community that came out um, for Memorial Day at Veterans Park. Um, I think that most of us were um, I really don't want to say surprised, but we were so glad that we had such a, a crowd uh, out for that event. Um, I think it was probably the largest group of people that's ever been in that mm -hmm. park since it since it opened. Um, yep. Um, <clears throat> I will um, apologize uh, for a couple of things. One, um, we had an awful lot of people trying to stand under one tree for a little bit of shade. Um, we will solve that. Um, next year we will have some, some type of shade there um, for people to get out of the, out of the sun. And, um, and we will also have a communication system out there. Um, I know it was very hard to hear what was going on. Um, anybody that really wanted to listen to the ceremony probably had some difficulty doing that. We will solve that problem um, next year. So thank you for coming out uh, to that event. Uh, we will be uh, doing a uh, distinguished disposal of the American flag ceremony uh, at the park on June 14th mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. in the morning. For anybody that uh, is available to come out for that, um, you're more than welcome to, to participate um, and observe that ceremony we will be um, burning uh, flags. It is the proper way to dispose of them. And so we will be doing that um, during the ceremony. Um, thank you for your participation and uh, we'll hope to see you out at the next event. Yes, ma'am. Vice Mayor. I can't see you guys, so I don't know if you can actually see me. Um, a couple things I want to address and one of them, I think we probably all forwarded to the city manager, I know I definitely did, was the political F signs along the road. And I believe that they came back and said that they were not much that we could do, but I'll let Mr. Uh, Peters elaborate on that when I'm finished here. Also wanna apologize for not being there. I'm not skipping a meeting 
as somebody insinuated because I don't want to be there. I was actually exposed to COVID or informed that I was exposed to COVID on Friday and discussed it with our city manager because I was concerned that there'd be somebody saying that I would purposely miss a meeting. I'm, I'm kind of shocked that uh, I have to even think of putting people at jeopardy because of craziness like that. But unfortunately, it, it was bad timing, but I told him I would follow the same protocol that any other staff member would follow. I'm excited, uh, Ryan, Parks and Rec, I think it's an absolute awesome idea for the carnival. I think that is going to generate so much community support and enthusiasm for the residents and I'm excited. I'm just, I, I've even asked a few people and I'm like, what would you think of a carnival? They, oh my God, they're just ecstatic about it. So these are some of the wonderful out of the box thinking that our staff's done all the way around and I'm very proud of each and every one of them and the team that Mr. Peters has pulled together, you know, it's great seeing where our city has come and the staff, uh, what's the word morale, where it's come over the last six months. And all I can say is thank you all very much. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I just have a couple of comments. Uh, several of us, uh, Commissioner Avila Vasquez and Commissioner Ramos and myself attended um, the property appraisers real estate values seminar uh, the other day and it was very, very interesting to see the multiple presentations. It wasn't only from the property appraiser, it was also about logistics and, and the growth of the whole area, uh, the entire Florida system of how logistics and Commissioner McCool, you're well versed in that, but it's very interesting uh, to look at what, what's, uh, what's coming into the state of Florida and in the big, big commentary is that the state itself is encouraging that for a long time was rivalry with Texas who can do more. And also um, Commissioner King, the, the Memorial Day event was amazing. It was really good. And um, to see all those people out there, I agree with you, it was uh, the most I've ever seen in all the years we've done things out there. And I, I would encourage the Parks Department and, and the city manager to really, when we have those kind of events, to have a, some sort of a portable system or if we do have something at each park, because the whole issue was the road noise from Elkin. That was the issue when we were standing up against the fence to hear all the cars go by. It was, you know, it was very hard to hear. But, I mean, there's so much good that goes in Deltona and those kind of parks that we have are amazing and those events that we have are, ama are amazing. And I, I wanna do a shout out to uh, our DTV staff because they are out there at every single event and they are either live streaming it or they are getting it up on DTV and on YouTube, one, two, three. And it is so great. And I think for the commission and for the public that's listening and sees this and hears me talking, it's something we really need to promote because those things are on the internet and, and I'm just really, really impressed with the quality and their dedication to how much they come out to every single event and do everything. It, it's just amazing. Thank you, Rocco, and thank you, Caitlin, and the rest of the team because, uh, you know, we've got the stuff and it's great to see to the point of positive publicity to bring all that out. So I'll quit babbling and are we close? Okay, what are we doing? Okay, the Charter Review Committee, Phyllis Allen, Albert Bryant, Chris Nobick, Pat Northy, Thomas Philpett, the two alternates, Dr. Caroline Shine, Brandy White. Okay, so go ahead and read that again. So it was Phyllis Allen, Phyllis Allen. Albert Bryant, okay. Chris Nobick, Pat Northy, Thomas Philpett. Alternates, Dr. Caroline Shine, Brandy White. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna need a motion and a second to accept that, correct, Mr. Fowler? Correct. Okay, motion and a second to go ahead and accept the five members and the two alternates for charter review. So, so moved. Oh. oh, multiple. Is there a second for anyone? Second. Okay, properly moved by 
We'll go with Commissioner King, no second. seconded by no Commissioner vote. Vasquez. May we vote, please. Commissioner Bill Vasquez? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Mayor Herzberg? Yes. And congratulations for everyone that is on our charter review. And we are adjourned.